Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, otherwise you would get all of them in, in one go. And yeah, some people are going to stay happen. longer, you know, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Oh, look at that. I have the, uh, I have, see, look, I missed something. There's last week's up on there. <laughs> oh, I did it yes, again. There you go. I did it again. <laughs> it's all common. Almost everybody does it. On... I installed fancy zones on my computers, and I really love it because I can. I can assign the, the windows to a little slot, and there will be no gaps in between. Oh, cool. So, yep. Hey, Mystical Four Nine One Fan, good to see you. As we're going doing the preludes a little early here, waiting for some uh, special guests to come on. Get cranking here. Can you hear me? I hope you guys can hear me. Hey, Von Moku. All right, awesome. Hello. Yeah. Hey, Patrick. Yeah, let's go. Phantom, first one and first guest. So, 491, start. I mean, if you got to contact them back. Um, uh, if your DMs are not contacting you, you need to contact them. I'm glad Scott Casper's doing it. Cool. I got all my uh, joust people, all 18 of them, set up. So. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Hello. What's up, bro? Hello. <laughs> yeah. Just a little bit there. I'm going to need to track down two of my players, one in each game. The winner of the joust has arrived. Yeah, well. Grape got the last choice, so he had the one character left. So he got he got Gisharin Hefleranus, which is uh, Cheyenne Stormman's uh, uh, little bo uh, elf boy toy <laughs> that uh, Alex Antiquitas played last year. Yeah, so. <laughs> That'll be a blast. That'll be a fun time. Good thing is you're not seated 16th. <laughs> it'll be it'll be fun. Hey Cold, can see. It. Well, all you need to do is target location, one of eight locations, and. Then one of six uh, stances before you roll that 27 die. It's all some things. There's Duffy. How you doing, Jim? Living the dream. Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. It sounded, sounded like you didn't yeah. know if it was a dream or, or not. <laughs> <laughs> Can we tell the difference nowadays? I don't that's know. True. You're absolutely that, that's right. very true. Yeah, I've, that's been in, very I've been true. in a nightmare yeah. for three weeks with this. COVID getting off of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oof. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of floating. Yeah. It's surreal. We can't tell if it's good or bad. So, yeah. Yeah, no, you can't land someone's horse. No. <laughs> you can target their head, though. You can target their helm. That's part of the rules. You can't target their horse? No, you can't target their horse. You can target their helm. Why? Why is. Who the hell? I, you can't target horses in land. That's completely dishonorable. Oh, you, that's one thing, but it's meaning you should be able to, but you have to take the consequences. You have to do what? You, 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 should, you should definitely be, you should be able to target whatever you want, but you have to. to yes, the but see, once again, the good thing is, is that the chainmail rules don't allow it, so therefore I can just say, it's not my fault, the chainmail rules don't allow it. Damn. We don't need we any. Found <laughs> we don't need we any found really a slinging up ahead in this. <laughs> And then I would do that, and I would use like a, you can use a roll to a slate of hand in order to, to kind of obfuscate the fact that you did it, or, or some other stuff. So so you and then the other have to you, people that watch it have to use perception. So that they can be kind of a kind of a, if half the audience yell that you cheater, and the other half said, "Oh, we did it." What's up, Robert? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I was having mic issues, which is why I'm a tad late. I'm just making sure this is still working. You're good. Yeah. So, uh, Patrick, rules restrict me when I want them to. Ah, uh, yeah. And that's, that's the way convenient. to do it. So, gotta be sneaky about it. <laughs> Somebody got a throat lozenge or something? Of course. Because it's just, it's just... I don't want to go through a coughing fit now, Mike. So I got these halls. We're going to listen to all of my halls. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not only listen to Jay, but that one. <laughs> Jimmy. Chuck says his power's out. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's why oh. we have cell phones. <laughs> You know, if you were fighting Canadian Ancient Gamer and Juan Carlos, but you're not. Great. I'm not telling. I'm not telling anyone who to fight in the first round. I don't want any. I don't want any underhand in this. But I got it all good. I got it all done. Now John. Now John's calling me on the phone. Gonna be one of those nights. <laughs> That's where you get all the dings. Yep. John. Good. Oh, Lord Games. Join the fray. Okay. Uh, you, you you got the login ID, right? Uh, it's my normal. It's normal. Okay. Normal number. All right. So, sounds good. I'll see you in a couple minutes. I'm already uh, in preludes right now. So I'll see. Oh my gosh! <laughs> uh, well, uh, why don't we? Uh, we'll ask that. We'll ask that live because I don't know. It's Spine Castle. I, I'm not sure. I mean, the there's closest, the, High the Highlanders are up there, right, Anna? The Highlanders ke keeps are up there. Yeah, I would. Yeah. I would yeah. give the uh, Epar's Castle, uh, uh, Red it, Falls, or um, Marner. <laughs> so I'm getting texts from Chuck, calls from John, you know. You don't have a squire. Great. <laughs> you're, 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 uh, you're, you're, your guy is uh, too low on the food chain. He's a, remember, he's a paramour of a high-level mage. It's actually in published source. I think he's the only published source character I have in the, in the whole thing, so. All right, uh, now, uh, what am I doing here? I'm doing, I'm hitting this. We're like eight minutes early, but who gives a shit, right? 
Oh, did I do the troll? Was that the troller games one? I can't even remember. Hopefully, you're all doing well. And the Eagles are three and zero. That's all that matters, right? Right, right, <laughs> right there, Tom. Correct. You good old. Uh, when did the Stillers play this week? Oh, they already did. They lost, didn't they? Yeah, they lost. <laughs> we got a long season. Yeah, well, you got to put Pickett in there. I, I, I'd get him in there sooner or later. Get him in there. stinks. Well, it's uh, in our offense. Uh, I need to drink him. <laughs> it's almost as bad as politics right now. But it's worse. Come on. It's <laughs> oh, God. worse. So tonight, as we enter, enter the labyrinth, labyrinth. <laughs> Robert, you are you are bipolar, right? Yes. Oh, I just wanted to make sure I didn't call you like, hey, because uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, welcome. Just, I, I've just sent a ringer to to do this for me. So. Oh, awesome. What's up, John? <laughs> Hello. Hey guys, good to see everybody. Yeah. Doing yeah. coming on a little early, but we're fine. You're so cool. You're cool, Jake. That you're here on the stage. Yeah. That's really cool. 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 And I can change like, what's in the window, which is kind of cool. And I know, so I'm getting, getting really cool. Sitting in the, uh, and I can change things around, move stuff around. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, I'm sneaky. I like it, Jake. Okay. There you go. A nice discussion. This is our third, uh, third time. Hey, Nazi. Hype us up. Uh, we're coming live, what, five minutes early? I don't think anyone's going to complain, correct? So, get all, get, get going on our prelude show here. So, good evening, everyone. A week away, actually, what, six, no, five days away, this Friday, we start Virtual Grow Icon. I'm J.K. Lorgazumba with me, always my partner in crime, Anna Meyer. And we got, we're going to have guests coming in and out all night, okay? So, let's introduce who we have on now. And then we'll talk about who's going to be. Uh, we got uh, some others coming on later on. Uh, so we got Robert. Everyone, you all know him as Phantom NJ. You have, and we'll, we'll, we'll all have everyone talk about the streams in a second. Jimmy Duffy, Prayers Rejects. Mike Disney himself, the art of Mike Disney. <laughs> you may not know, Ro Robert, how do you pronounce your last name? Uh, it's Athianitis. Ath is that Greek? Yes. Atianitis. Yes, mm -hmm. Robert Atianitis, who's bipolar dice roller, and he's a first timer to uh, to Virtual Grocon. Welcome. Thank you. God help you. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. And then I'm getting uh, started. John Birchfield, Blue Box RPG. Some other people will be hopping in. Hopefully, well, Chuck Combo's power's out. I got a whole bunch of information from him. Stephen Chenault, the owner of Troller Games. Three or three, at least three people from Grail Reborn, Phoenix Iwaki. Uh, I think um, second hour we're going to see um, Guild Superior as well. Uh, so we're going to have a nice discussion here on uh, all the great things going on. So uh, why don't all our guests just tell us a little bit about your stream, not what you're running, but what you do uh, in Twitch uh, in, the, in the community. We'll start up top with Robert. Go ahead, Robert. Oh, boy. <laughs> So yeah, no, I mean, for, first of all, I um, I'm co-hosting with uh, John at Blue Box on Wednesday nights on War Masters Arcanum. Um, I also run a open-ended Castles and Crusades campaign on their Discord every Friday night. Friday night Crusades. It's been going for over a year now and shows no sign of abating. Mm -hmm. um, and I am just finishing. I just finished up today the form Twice. that I'm putting out for a casting call. For a Castle and Crusades campaign that will be running on Sunday afternoons. So that will uh, be going out via Twitter and probably a bunch of different discords um, 
either tonight or tomorrow. Very cool, Robert. Robert's running two highlighted streams as well. And we'll talk about them upcoming. So I really appreciate you taking some of the less desirable time slots, <laughs> which is uh, which is cool, uh, especially that really super early Sunday morning. Oh my gosh! I hope I'm in all three Sunday morning games. I'm in all three, <laughs> all, all three, all three early games: Friday, Saturday, are Sunday. You, are you playing in Tim's oh. game? I am playing in Tim's oh, game. Oh, yeah, Tim will be on. Oh, Tim will be on later too. The yeah, Ever Mysterious Tim will be on, too, to talk about a lot of things. So that's awesome, Robert, and thank you so very much. Duff, what's going on, man? That's a good question. I never know. <laughs> so I have to have people tell me. Uh, hi, folks. Yeah, I'm Duff563, otherwise known as Lord Prater. Prater's Rejects here. Uh, we run... We have been, we'll just say we're running, we only have a couple of shows going on right now, Monday and Saturdays. Um, we're in the midst of um, thinking, well, I'll be honest, we're taking the channel back to uh, square one. And I am making some changes for programming, what we're doing, where we're going to be programming at. Uh, yeah, so uh, just... Just, it's time for a revamp and uh so that's why we've been we've been uh not doing much but also a life has thrown me a huge curveball with career as i've told jay and a few other people and that has taken front seat uh because career pays the bills and uh yep. i'm very i'm very busy right now with that so well, but we'll get there plus not you're going doing anywhere. stuff for gary con too well, I was getting ready to go there. Yeah. So, and I'm Luke's, yeah, one of Luke's bitches. So, uh, excuse my French, but uh, <laughs> yeah, we, uh, uh, us and KC, uh, Everhart, we uh, run Gary Con Live. We pretty much run that channel now for Luke. Uh, and we're in discussions with Luke of running it full time. Uh, we've got some discussions to take care of and Game Hole Con because I'll be there also because we run the channel for Alex over at Game Hole Con too and his content. Uh, and so, that uh, between all that, that keeps me pretty busy. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so, but let just love hanging on and ha harassing Jay for three years now. So. Yes, absolutely. So and, uh, let me tell you something, Gary Khan's going to be another blast this year too. We're really looking forward to it. Plus all the other things that are coming up that I know uh, a lot of that you can't share. Um, but we got, you know, it's going to be a lot of really, uh, neat a lot of stuff for yep. 2023. So welcome back, Jimmy. And thank you for particip participating again this year. Really awesome. Really appreciate it. Always. The Overgord, Mike Disney. What's going on, Mike? Hey, what's up? Uh, not much, really. Just uh, I know that I'm going to be painting up a paladin. Yes. For a virtual Greyhawk Con. So that's going to be uh, a lot of fun there. Hopefully it's a Reaper miniature. Yes, it, uh, it is. I think um, I'm going um, to overnight you one tomorrow. So it'll get to you in time, unless uh, unless unless uh, unless Builder Master Crafter and you have gotten together on one. Um, so far, uh, I'm not sure. No. Uh, okay. All right. We'll, we'll we'll be taking care of that tomorrow morning. So it'll be for L. Rothschild too, the paladin who uh, Taryn plays in my campaign. So yeah, it'll be a nice one too. And he'll be uh, Michael will be doing that on. Uh, and Mike's not kicking things off. Normally Mike kicks things off, but we got I know we got bipolar Phoenix. He's doing real early in the morning. So we, uh, so you don't have to go first this time, Mike, on your on your stream, which is really cool. Feels weird. It feels strange. Like I'm you know doing something wrong. <laughs> plus, <laughs> we'll possibly be giving one of these away tonight. In addition to, I'm going to give away a Virtual Grout Con three T-shirt. Oh, nice. Now, I only have small, mediums, and larges left to give away. Sorry. So if you got it to a kid or whatever, that's all I have. And they've been selling really well. And then we're going to give away two 3D uh, print uh, file sets that weren't weren't claimed, and I'll go over them shortly. So we have four giveaways tonight, uh, pre pre con. So, um, but yeah, Mike, thanks for all the participation. Yeah, no problem. It's always my pleasure. So uh, I enjoy doing it. I enjoy painting, and I enjoy the community. So. Thanks. Yep. Uh, brand new to uh, to our stream, to our channel there, Anna. Robert, Bipolar Dice Roller, uh, tell us a little bit about what you do, uh, do on Twitch, please, and welcome. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, well, up until recently, I was running a weekly Spelljammer live stream um, over on my Twitch channel. Uh, we did so until the official release came out, and 
uh, something that we in the Spelljammer community certainly weren't expecting uh, for quite a long time, but uh, it finally did happen for us in 5e. Uh, certain changes were made, uh, some internal issues on the stream kind of uh, had us wind up that particular story arc, um, but I'm currently in the development of a new string of stories for the Twitch channel, which um, hopefully I can announce more soon. Uh, the most interesting thing that I have been involved with recently, though, was the inception of Jammercon, a virtual Spelljammer convention for fellow Spelljammer fans, uh, alongside others who are quite heavily involved in this side of the community, uh, Zarathon, yeah, um, yep. uh, and Ron, uh, uh, Trevor, guys from Greyhawk Reborn, um, who are the people who have connected me to this side of things. Um, and so for virtual Greyhawk Con, I'm going to be running a Spelljammer game centered around Grayspace, which uh, I think will be uh, a fun thing to do because I, I don't often get the opportunity to to run many games in Grayspace. So I'm excited to do so. And cool. we really appreciate that. And let me go right now. I'm going to be bouncing back and forth, but let me go right here and let me go to the event schedule here. And I'm going to, mm -hmm. I'm going to bring this up as much as I can. Um, you still got two open seats. Yeah, right. I do. He still has two open seats. It is, uh, it is 8 a.m. EDT. Mm -hmm. But, uh, hey, if you're not in a game there, um, there's an opportunity. <laughs> if you're interested in playing uh, Spelljammer, Greyhawk Hybrid, here's your chance to get in on that game. So, and That's we'll talk, right. we'll talk about, we'll shout out some more uh, as we go. And, uh, Robert, thanks for, uh, thanks for hanging with us tonight here, uh, on a wonderful, wonderful, uh, third annual, uh, prelude show. And, uh, Next man doesn't need any introduction, I don't think. Go ahead, John. I'm Blue Box <laughs> RPG. Wait, I'm not going to volunteer for that, Jay. <laughs> 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 who is, who is he? <laughs> uh, hey, Jay, thanks so much for having me on tonight. And uh, I'm zoomed out a little bit further than normal because I wanted to make sure everyone saw the shirt that I'm wearing. And I know he's going to be on later tonight, but you've seen this before. This is my Don't Blame Me, The Ever Mysterious Tim Made Me Do It. Yeah, oh, well, wow. absolutely. Because those those crit tables have absolutely been torturous, and um, I've loved it. Uh, but no, uh, Jay, as you know, I run my normal Greyhawk Awakening stream on Tuesday nights. That is now at episode 90 this uh, upcoming weekend. Uh, for those of you who don't know, that's actually being divided into three separate books. Uh, the first book was 57 episodes. We're now 32. This will be the 33rd episode Am I doing my math? Yeah, or 23rd. Uh, so 47, now 33rd episode in book two. And then there will be a book three uh, that will come after this. And then we'll be jumping back and forth between the books. So much like you would read a novel, uh, think of you know Game of Thrones or Song of Fire and Ice as an example where it'll focus on a certain story arc and then boom, suddenly shift to another story arc, but it's all interwoven. So that's how uh, Greyhawk Awakening is structured. Uh, currently the party is in Spine Castle, uh, just finished beneath the Temple of Hextor uh, using that great, um, great module uh, co-written by Gary Holian and uh, actually suggested by Jay when I was looking for something to do at this point in my uh, game and it's gone on now for it's been a good uh, eight eight nine sessions I think that we've been in that module and that's going to influence one of my uh, VGHC streams then on uh, Wednesday nights I do my lore master arcanum and I actually do have a new uh, overlay and whatnot I'll be launching pretty soon as well Jay uh, and then on my Sunday stream we just concluded a three-year campaign based in the Pathfinder world of Galarian, uh, running a heavily modified version of the uh, Rune Lords, original Rune Lords campaign. That was a blast. Uh, then we had a couple of players that moved. And so now we have a uh, mingled new cast, two of the old players and two new players playing in the Tears of Aird. Uh, Aird is, of course, the uh, brainchild of Stephen Cheneau of Trollord Games. And it's a fantastically well-built-out world. And it is also now Greyhawk connected through the Free City of Altamira. Uh, as Jay is putting the Free City of Altamira box set together for the folks at Trollord Games. Can't wait to get my hands on that. So Altamira exists both in Greyhawk and in Aird. So my party in the uh, Tears of Aird has started out in the free city of Altamira. They're currently in the low quarter and uh, actually <laughs> kind of some fun things that have come along uh, from that. And in two weeks, that group will be streaming again after Greyhawk Con. And uh, they, of course, uh, these urchins that we started out with, they're all starting as children um, and they won't remain that way long. We'll, we'll fast forward at some point and they'll be early 20s. Uh, but they're going to be uh, hearing the 
hushed and excited tones of the denizens of Altamira about the joust, which is upcoming. Yes. Speaking of that, so two questions, John. Moose asked something about a cat in your stream today. <laughs> yeah. So uh, one of the one of the players um, is uh, was the uh, the son of or the uh, the son of a nobleman, noble noble family. Um, horrific thing happened at the very beginning of the game. Um, they were politically assassinated. Home was burned to the ground. And then in today's session, uh, the party is led by a thief or an aspiring thief um, who's a member of the Guild of Gentle Supplication, which are the beggars. They led him back to. Uh, the place where his home was burned down. They were excavating, looking for family mementos. She found the family cat, or they found the family cat. And um, because guards were patrolling, uh, Click, the thief, took the cat and threw it, uh, physically pried <laughs> it, pried it from, <laughs> from its owner's hands and threw it into the ash and, uh, and the coals to distract the guards. Um, the chat was not happy. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to get a 30 day ban for animal abuse either, there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the cat was fine. So, <laughs> <laughs> Guild of Gentle Supplication is it? Wait, is that what, what you call the Beggars Guild? Yeah, the, they're the Gogs, the Guild of Gentle Supplication. I got to remember that. Okay, that's awesome. I got something else to add into the writings there. That's, that's fantastic. Um, and then we'll, uh, John, before you go, we'll talk about one Mandorlaren, Mandorlaren Dambaran. <laughs> Mandarallin. <laughs> yeah, I, I, wow, what a name. And everyone's like, who the hell is that? Well, we guys are all going to find out shortly about that, too. So we have some have some fun, uh, fun discussions here. All right, so this is what I want to ask everyone. What are you looking most forward to? What are you all looking most forward to besides something you're running? Three days of con. It could be a game you're playing in, a, a, a seminar. The joust. Yeah, I was going to say <laughs> It's hands down the joust. Okay. The end? No, I'm sorry. What? The, the joust. Yeah. Jimmy's just on for the ride. He's like, I'm just, <laughs> I'm streaming after the joust at late night. And well, yeah. I'm going to, everybody's going to come over. We're just going to hang, hanging out, having fun. So that's all that matters there, the Jimmy. The joust is the big thing. So uh, we're let, all here for the joust. That's so. Do you all remember what happened when I ran the joust at Gary Con a year and a half ago? Do you all remember? I kicked my cord out. Right when I started, <laughs> <laughs> I knocked the stream off. I was like, "You got to be kidding me!" Yeah, I did, uh, so got a little uh, got a little panicked because it was a major. And now I can't find my sheets. I can't believe this. I got so much stuff everywhere, John. So, um, thank you uh, about that. There's 18 competitors in the joust this time. There's two spoilers, <laughs> and and Mike's playing one of them. Von Malku's playing the other one. Uh, so you will see the return of Sir Vargrin the Unmerciful, a former champion and a real douche. Right, oh, Mike? That's right. <laughs> that is correct you right there. You will see Sir Vargrin. Hey, thanks, Mitch, coming. And then also the, pre the last champion, Matthew Barnabas. Yes, he's named after a, a former hockey player. Uh, if you get the joke... Kudos to you from the uh, of the blinding light from 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 yes a Fultian and uh, they're both the spoilers and we'll, I'll explain that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna give away any secrets until that night is how this is gonna work we're gonna expand it so that we have a lot of people who are one and done in the first round and I don't want that to happen again um, and uh, note the following if if you do you could win this just there you go. The actual Free City of Altima Grand Joust Champion Trophy oh. could be yours. So, yep. Looking Love forward it. to it. One other thing, and Tim will come on and talk about that, is uh, Duncan Jousty, the Cromulent, is looking for some ads and some spiffs and some one or two liners. So if you want to say something, you want an ad, or you want to say, profess your love for another cat, whatever, get with Tim, junk, Duncan Jousty, and he will, as he does his announcing during the, the during the event, he will proclaim it. As he does, has he's done the uh, the past events? What a fun time! What else though? Come on, besides the joust, there's got to be some other fun things. So uh, a couple of things. One, playing in Tim's game, uh, that's going to be. I'm looking forward to that. I mean, the, picking joust would be too easy, so go going with that. And I'll, I'll be honest, I am I am really getting very excited about running White Plume Mountain for a group. And I can't. Awesome. Uh, 
that's that's you know it's one of my favorite in terms of like really compact mo uh, modules from first edition being able to yep. run that for a group uh in cnc is going to be a heck of a lot of fun Speak, speaking of that you got one plume mountain jimmy what are you running you're running another classic correct well, I'm running, I'm just trying to bring a little storyline, uh, playing around with a little info before uh, the Keep on the Borderland. So, because I'm looking at getting that ramped up for a new show. And so just there's a, there was a module out there that brought some information, you know, some backstory or some prequel information. So I'm putting some of that together just awesome. to have some fun with. Yeah. Yep. Who, do we know of any of your players? Any pre uh, sign ups, or did you? Uh, let me see here. Who uh, me? Yeah. Which, who you? All my guys are all new. Oh, it's a it's completely all, all sign. Wow, that is awesome. Yeah, Duff, that's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, I, was, I let everybody. It was. I was thinking you're going to throw in Myriad or someone. You know. Nope. Uh, wow, nope. nice. We'll subject five new people to the rejects. That's you know? that's so, fantastic. Sorry, folks. So they won't be the same when they come out the other end. And the most surprising thing of all out of all of these six here is is for the first time ever, we're going to see Anna Meyer's campaign live, too. Yeah. Ooh. Sunday morning. Yep. So Rob will be we had our session. Yeah. yeah, we had our session zero today. So so we got the invited the players and we and we babbled and some of us stayed along and babbled for like four hours. So that were a little bit over four hours. So it was actually longer than, than a full session. So, so spilling the beans and, and getting the tech set up and stuff. So it would be fun. So the, my patrons will get the pre-gens will spill out this during the week. So they, they will get the pre-gens, but about two pages of backstory and, and, and stats and stuff. So, so that will be a little bit of, uh, there will be a few secrets that I will, will not write in the, uh, the preview that I would just tell the players, so to speak, because the, some of the, the characters might know a few things in the background, but it will be in this set, set in Southern Shield and using a homebrew version of Advanced 5e from Level Up from Ian World. So it's a 5e fork kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yep, and when it comes to the rules. So it plays very much like 5e with some hidden bells and whistles under the hood, so to speak. So, uh, Jay, real quickly, I know you say this all the time, but frankly, you have to because she is your sidekick every Wednesday. But if you're not in Anna's Patreon, uh, you're missing out. I'm, I'm in several Patreons. There is no one that provides more value to the people that are in their Patreon than Anna. Uh, she is oh, constantly you. pumping out fantastic content. And Anna, I look forward to getting Absolutely. those. But just thank you for everything that you put out. Thank mm. you. And I've been lazy for several weeks now, and that's <laughs> because I've been ramping up for, for, for convention. So now it starts dropping out more and more. So yeah, yeah uh, it was actually a reverse compliment, and I was trying to prompt you to put out more. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I I, uh, I think you're, yeah. Anna, you put out like almost 400 pieces of heraldry for everyone. I mean, my oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's been. Yeah, more yeah coming. and all yep. the other mm -hmm. things that are going on. So that's, fan, you know, just so yep. fantastic. By the way, the four giveaways tonight, if you want to know, let me do that real quick. The shirt. Right, small, medium, or large only. Sorry. A Mike Disney signed overgrown print. STLs. I know Rob will get excited about this. Gamescape 3D. I have a second one that no one uh, claimed, and that is uh, their um, their entire um, setup. He's building these new wonderful. I'll cover my own face. He's building these new wonderful terrain pieces. He got it. He um, he sees my geohex on the table, and he goes, "I think I can replicate that and make it." you know, cooler. Uh, and so that's what he's doing with that. And with that, all the buildings that are coming with that, including the witch's hut, which is the overgored witch's hut, <laughs> which is on its way <laughs> to us for a, sh a stream I'll talk about later on. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and that, that's, uh, that's one of the giveaways tonight. Uh, I have the Dropbox linked already. So uh, I'll get that right, you know, and that will, there'll be add-ons for that for next month. So if you win at this right now, you'll get that add on. And and then the other one is uh, Infinite Dimensions. No one claimed the last Tarf Kitchens Thursday night. So we'll do that too, which is a great STL as well. So that gives us four giveaways just for tonight. Uh, and uh, hopefully Chuck or uh, will be able to get on. He's got a lot of stuff planned for uh, what, what they're doing as a sponsor. By the way, we have four major sponsors of Virtual Crowd Con this year. Troller Games. Gamescape 3D, Infinite Dimension Games, and Cave Geek Art. Uh, Kefir stepped up. We're going to give away three of this wonderful Greyhawk, at least three of this wonderful Greyhawk print. If you haven't seen this, I, Robert has the original. 
Rob, right, and he got that during the fundraiser. Uh, he has the absolute original of this, but these prints are so realistic looking. They're awesome. It's the Free City Greyhawk area, surrounding area, a lot of uh, no, uh, places of interest on this map. So uh, that'll be something else that we uh, will be doing during Virtual Growlcon. Patrick is, uh, Canadian Engineer Patrick has given a, a ton of stuff, a whole bunch of second edition books, lots of great things. So just note there'll be a, a ton of, ton of giveaways during the event coming. So, um, what else is everyone looking forward to? I'll tell you what I'm looking forward to. I'm actually in a seminar on Saturday. Um, and that is Stephen Chenault's hosting a seminar. And if you haven't seen it in the schedule, it's kind of hidden. It's kind of hidden because there's a, um, um, and, and then I think this show will read right into John after that. And it's, uh, it's, it's on Saturday and it's called, um, Oh, now I can't find it. Uh, this is me. Uh, uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I can't even find it now. Like their number, uh, so. Seminar, seminar. Oh, Aired Greyhawk and Altamira. Aired wow. Greyhawk and Altamira. Yeah. So uh, that will be, uh, that'll be an awesome one. Uh, and, and that's a Troller Games and Troller Games. Uh, uh, I'll be sitting on it. We're just going to, we're going to talk about all of the, what's going to be going on uh, with all the organizations and uh, the ideas Stephen has. We're going to, it's going to be almost, uh, uh, um, Anna, are you available? I don't even know if you're available for that. Uh, what time? Uh, <laughs> it's like four Eastern yeah. or something like that. I'll get on, with on, you. On, I'll get with on you. On Saturday? Yeah, yeah Saturday. On, on Saturday, no problem. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. we'll, we'll get with that. And, and it's a short, you know, yep. Stephen likes short stuff, so it'll be quick. I think it'll be an hour and then we'll, you know, pop into John's as John's yep. running. Yeah. So, uh, but I'm looking forward to just sitting down and talking with him uh, and for, uh, with all the stuff that we're doing for, for this box set. And that John has really kickstarted his stuff and has started a campaign in it too, which is so awesome. So, uh, John, what's the most surprising thing that's happened in the two sessions? Ooh, good question. Um, <clears throat> let's see. I think the exploration uh, that happened and just the, the way it became so organic with the elements that you have already created in the Free City, the Bobet Common House was such <laughs> a um, and the way the players oh have God. adapted to it, and it just created this sort of rich playground for them, specifically uh, because the, the children are all starting out as urchins. Um, they were uh, accosted by some bullies in session zero, the back half of session zero. And one of the players who's this really meek uh, young lady, super clever and smart, she's like mid twenties, and um, her character actually shanked this bully with a piece of glass. I think that was pretty surprising. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> so um, that that's awesome. I mean, hey, did did they like in the face or no, no, in the side. Oh. In the side. And, and then the other the other player uh, healed him. Uh, she's got this very limited uh, sort of nascent. Ultimately, they're all planning. I'm using Anna's sort of classless uh, style for level zero. So they've all picked what they think they want to be by level one. And I'm giving them little um, tendrils of those abilities uh, that sort of pre-level one. Uh, but then that may change based on how they role play the level zero session. So, yeah, it was, that That's was a cool. lot of fun. Yeah. Very, very cool. Uh, I know Mike was watching it. Rob's watching it. Uh, anyone else been uh, watching it? It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty intense. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's it's got a different feel to it, which I really like. So uh, definitely uh, would recommend it. On it's every other Sunday, two thirty Eastern, one thirty Central. Correct, John. Correct. That's right. Okay. Very cool. All right, Robert. I have a question for bipolar Robert. Explain to me, gray space. Um. I. In, in in its entirety, or um, just like uh, what what the pitch, what yeah. the yeah what the appeal of playing yeah. Greyhawk games in space might be. Yes. Well, uh, I think the the real appeal to someone who um, who definitely started out as a I'm gonna I'm gonna say a swear on the stream now uh, That's forgotten a... realms centric That's uh, person. No, I know. I'm, I'm just... Yeah, we got Ed's a um, <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Um, the uh the i think the appeal really of playing a a spell jammer game that isn't centered around realm space or or um crin space is obviously like the uh the, the deific dynamics of greyhawk are so much more um kind of dichotomous than they are in other settings so i always try to imagine how that 
uh, kind of religious zealotry of like certain faiths extends into the stars beyond uh, our earth itself. Um, and I've kind of, for my stream, uh, honed in on one of the uh, more interesting elements of gray space, which is a, uh, a planet, which I, I don't know the correct pronunciation because I don't think it's ever been said anywhere that I've ever seen it, but I believe it's pronounced Genibali or Genibale. I don't know. You guys are the experts. You'd have to tell me. Um, uh, which is essentially this like cluster of uh, asteroids and um, a larger, uh, you know, like celestial body that are ruled over by like scores of undead. Right, uh, just kind of hanging over Oath, because Oath is another another interesting thing about gray space is that gray space as a system is a, like um, I can't remember the technical term for it, and I really should because I you know I'm espousing spell jammer here. Um, <laughs> the the other planets of gray space and the sun itself revolve around Oath, right? Not a central sun, but the planet itself is the center of the universe, um, and so. The, the question the question that is always posited to people who enjoy Spelljammer is what influence does that setting have on the the groundling setting that the writers uh, started with? And the answer is typically not very much because Spelljammer was created after those settings. Um, but I think the real appeal is introducing those almost alien elements to the the well-known kind of fabric of that of those particular universes so uh, my concept is what happens if those undead on Genevely have kind of not exhausted their resources but have burgeoned enough in strength where they can bring that threat to oa huh. how do those undead traverse the void from Genevely to oa and then how would that impact the great nations and uh, organizations of Greyhawk, um, and how would they respond to that? Um, and I think that the pretty obvious thing is that um, you know the the bane of undead, uh, you know clerics of Paylor and the like, would set up on a a great uh, you know magical barge and fly up to Geneva and show them who's boss. Um, and that is that is what my uh, my game and the stream that I will be doing uh, kind of focuses around. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the cool, cool thing—the cool thing about Spelljammer—and I'll say this as someone coming in with a more like Spelljammer first, then like Greyhawk second mindset—is mm -hmm. that Spelljammer does this fantastic job of interconnecting all of these really awesome settings. Um, I'm sure we're all very familiar with novels and instances and articles of um, characters from various settings and worlds, all kind of meeting up with each other, collaborating on things. Um, uh how 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 their their mindsets and uh their cultures kind of clash uh and i, I think that's that's the main appeal of of bringing spelljammer to greyhawk is introducing especially people who play 5e to a setting that they are very you know in the minority exposed to uh by virtue of the the focus setting and there's still two seats for it everyone so mm -hmm. If I, I've never played it. How many here have played Spelljammer? I've never played a Spelljammer game. You have, Rob? Yeah. I used to run it back in the uh, se uh, second edition days. Kind of, wow. it was one of the... Hey, Rob. It, we, it, the, actually, the main campaign that I was running uh, went there for a while, and then people liked it enough that uh, we, you know, smaller groups using it. Well, love I'll to get there. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Rob, I didn't mean to cut you off. I was, I was saying, well, I've never played it. If I didn't have so much going on, I would have loved to play in that game. Robert, you sold it well. You sound like a really sharp guy. And so I'm sure you're going to snap up those two players pretty quickly here. Thank you. Um, let, let, yeah, let's hope. Let's, let, let's hope that we get a, you know, get a full, you know, it's always <laughs> great to get filled. And speaking of that, Jim, Jimmy, do you have someone drop your, what, your game? I see you have an open seat now. So, yeah, I just saw that uh, we've got a spot open. So uh, he decided that he uh, what, didn't want to stay up late. Okay, he, well, you, you know, know, he did, yeah, he just because of work and all that, it was going to be too late for him to play a game. So, so we got 11, so. 11 p.m. EDT also is a highlighted stream, and it's Jimmy Duffy's stream. Uh, it's, uh, oh, my God, uh, it's titled Borderlands of Chaos. All right, and there's one open seat of five there as well. So and we'll be yep. raiding into that. 
Every, uh, please, everyone, if you don't know who you're rating into when you're streaming, ask me, and I'll verify for you who you're going to be rating into. So we keep that momentum bed, really yeah. hopping, hopping. Um, you know, uh, it's an important thing. Um, so, Mike, are you playing in any other games besides the Joust? Um, I don't believe so. Okay. No. That spell jammer game sounds very, very interesting, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I think you could fit it in because that's four hours. Is it four hours? Um, yeah. Typically, I run between three and four hours and uh, starts at 1 p.m. GMT, so 8 a.m. EST or EDT. Is the start time. What time does Mike start? Mike starts at Mike. I mean, you could you could do it. It's four hours and it'll go right into your game. Right into your uh, uh, crafting stream. So, Mike, you could sign up for it if you want. <laughs> oh, it would, go, it would go into my... No. My, it would finish. How, early, how early would I have to be up for that game? <laughs> it's 8 a.m. EDT, man. That's not that early. <laughs> no, no. no <laughs> <not that>. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will answer that as later, probably in the second hour, okay? I'll answer the mechanics of it. Plus, also, I haven't even talked about who's participating, like the big names. The big, 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 big names. You know, they've got some really special guests uh, playing in the jails, too. What, as big as you can get is names in, in, all of, in all of the gaming world. So let's just put it that way. So uh, it's going to be exciting. Everyone's gunning for this person. So it's going to be a fun time. So, uh, But yeah, Mike, if you, if you decide to sign up, let me know. Um, yep. I can manually put you in. So, um, Rob, uh, do you have any open spots? Uh, me? Yeah, Phantom. Um, <laughs> Sunday, Sunday morning for um, Shadows of the Green Sky, uh, I have two open spots. And that is 7 a.m. Sunday, everyone. 7 a.m., yep. And you'll be raiding into, uh, you'll be raiding into Anna. Um, so uh, that's another highlighted stream. So right there we have... Robert Bipolar has two, Robert uh, Phantom has two, and Jimmy Duffy has one that's five. I, look, I can't even do it with my hand. Five open slots if you want to be on a highlighted stream. There's there's plenty of open spots to get in those games, which is, you know, it's just a cool opportunity to meet some new people and have some fun. So, um, John, I know you're all filled. Uh, tell us a little bit about your uh, games before you uh, got to depart, I know, shortly. Sure. And uh, again, Jay, thanks for having me on. Of course. Tonight. Really excited about this weekend. Uh, so my two games, the first one on Friday night is titled Rescue at Veramar Mine. And uh, this is going to be um, a bit of a, you know, kind of a two-piece uh, urban setting, then more of a dungeon crawl style. Uh, what I'm excited about with this is, as you know, uh, like you do, Jay, I run all of my own production. So all of the stuff I do with, you know, that's why I hit the wrong buttons too. And yeah. you know, all the audio effects, all the cameras, all the, if I'm running VTT, I'm uh, running all that. Uh, but this time I'm actually going to have some help. Um, some of you know Demon Gund, uh, John. He is a, he's a fantastic modder for Tales Spire, and he's actually created this gorgeous um, 3D uh, environment uh, that's got all the, it's got several different rooms and settings, and he's going to be actually running the VTT tech for me while I'm doing the DMing. That's a luxury I don't normally get, and he is fantastic. So I've got a good group of players, and uh, it should be a lot of fun. Then the second one, which I'm not only excited about, but I have a question for the group. Uh, you can help me with something. So as I mentioned, I've been running the Spine Castle module uh, in my Greyhawk Awakening uh, from Dragon Mag here. I I've got it right. I think it's 148. Is that right? I believe that's right. Sounds right. Um, I can look it up in a second, but I believe it's 148. Uh, which was partially written by Gary Holian. And uh, they have just rescued the spy uh, beneath uh, the uh, Temple of Hextor. Now, in the original module, you had uh, two pieces to it. It was really written for the rescue of the spy. Uh, the Count uh, from Nural, Count Dunstan, sent the party there uh, to try to rescue the spy. Um, but the backstory behind it is there's something called the Key to Spine Castle. And the Key of Spine Castle is actually an artifact which is going to be used. Uh, they're trying to use these cultists to raise an army of undead yep. so my game on saturday uh entitled siege and desperation is is uh positing the idea that they were successful 
separate from my Greyhawk campaign. What happened if uh, the cultists were successful and in fact raised this undead army? And now this undead army is sweeping through uh, cities on the Eastern Flaness. So uh, my question is, I need a city to be placed under siege, which should be largely uh, humanoid. You got a lot of the orcs and goblins and, you know, the spine castle obviously is all, um, you know, hardcore humanoids, but I'm looking for a primarily human city, you know, elves, dwarves, humans, walled, close to that spine castle area there, right, probably just south of the bone march. Uh, so what, what jumps to mind first as the proper target for this undead horde to be descending upon? Okay. Uh, John's port, Bellport, uh, well, I'm Red thinking, Falls. I think Neural myself. So Neural would make the most sense because that's, that's where Count Dunstan is and that's where they were sent uh, off. Then, uh, yeah. I think that's... That's probably that probably makes sense for that to return to center. Um, yeah. So that'll be fun. And so you're going to see there's maps of it too, done by the community. There's maps yeah. of it. And so that yeah. one will be a stream in which I'll be using uh, both theater of mine, probably have some tail spire and then also have physical tabletop terrain and minis. I'll use all three uh, mediums to tell the story and uh, very excited about that. You know, if you really want to, Dale has shirt of bears on, if you really want to get him upset, just have, have all of his Highlander keeps all slaughtered. Oh, that's already been done. <laughs> <laughs> the, horde, the horde swept through. The they, they have they have the various Highlanders' heads oh. off as their armies uh, march along. Dead bodies of the Highlander <laughs> lords dangle from their. Yeah, no, it's yeah, it's already done. Let's, 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 you no, know, it makes sense. I mean, they could come through. The, I mean, there's just open a area in the Bone Marsh, a lot of trails and stuff, and there's a lot of ruins. I, I just. Just came to mind there. Yeah, I but, think Neural is the right choice because cool. that, that's where that's yeah. where Dunstan sent them out from. <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah, awesome. John likes to destroy stuff in, in his version of Greyhawk. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, this is a one shot; it doesn't count. Yeah, there's no cannon here. Yeah, uh, but it's definitely uh, it's definitely fun. Uh, it'll be a fun time, and Highlanders will hold the wall until the end of time. Well, yeah, yeah, them in Orlando Bloom and Kingdom in Heaven of Heaven, right, Dale? So there you go. <laughs> Just a joke there. So, uh, cool one, uh, John. I know you got a roll shortly, so just uh, yeah. I know you stream today and are um, crashing uh, and 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 getting a lot of great things going on. That's really awesome. Tell uh, do me a favor and tell everyone one last thing about Rory's campaign. It's going to be starting up too. Another Greyhawk one on your stream. I don't think a lot of people know about it. Yeah. So, uh, Rory. So, as you heard, Jay said, Tears of Aired will be alternating every other Sunday. Um, and so to make sure we have content that's hitting every week, uh, Rory, who is a big part of our channel, he's one of our mods, he's a you know kind of a co-collaborator with me on a lot, a lot that we're doing. He's starting a stream that will be running every other week. Uh, it'll run and then uh, raid into Gavin on Sunday afternoons and evenings. And it's called Fall of the Red Dawn. And he has done so much Greyhawk research. Uh, I know, Jay, he's been picking your brain. He's using a lot of Anna's heraldry and materials. He's all over the wikis. That's just Rory's personality. He's very organized, very detailed uh, in his research. And I believe his idea, idea is that um, he's got five wizards, I think, that are going to be part of a group uh, starting a very unusual party composition. And he's got a pretty cool concept behind it. So that'll all be posted on our Discord and our Instagram. It's called Fall of the Red Dawn, of course, all Greyhawk. Um, so, uh, you know, everything that we will have on Blue Box now will be Greyhawk connected, either directly in this in Greyhawk itself, or uh, you know, in aired with the Free City of Altamira connection. Awesome, looking forward to it, definitely. And uh, you know, Rory's a very, uh, uh, very That's hyped awesome. up on Greyhawk, which is great. Yep. So, yeah, he really is. Yeah. Yep. So, um. Here comes my next uh, question for the group. Uh, this is a little. This is a little out there. So, can you think of a? Can you think of someone outside the community who you'd love to see participate in an event, whether it's a stream or a fundraiser? Someone who's not participated in our community to this date. I'll I'll throw one out there. Okay, I need to get Dave Walters involved in something once. Right. I love to see Dave playing a game, playing one of my games, or you know, stream something. Uh, that would be that would be a good one. Um, anyone else have have any ideas of someone who you'd love to see participate in the Greyhawk community? Just even if it's for one time. Um, I would love to see Dwayne the Rock Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> John, thanks a lot, man, for coming on. I know you had to yeah. bolt, and I really yeah. appreciate your participation. See you soon, guys. All right. Talk yeah. to you soon, John. We have uh, people rolling in. That, that's that's funny. Uh, you know, I, 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 I've not reached out to him. I've reached out to some other, uh, you know, big names, but I've been unsuccessful recently. People got stuff going on. Um, anyone else want to throw one out there? <clears throat> Jimmy, you know all these great people. Yeah, I have two people. Them? Oh, sorry. <laughs> go, ahead, Anna. go ahead, Anna. Go ahead, Anna. You yeah, I have two first. people that I want to see. One that I hope we can have very shortly. And that is Wo Singer, Paul Luby. And, and oh. I really I really looking forward to it because he helped me out map mapping wise okay. like 10, 15, yeah, 15 years ago. And and it was great help. He's so always really a Gary Con to... too, isn't he? Is Paul Luby always know. a Gary? No? No, I don't no? think so. Okay. But anyway, yeah. So so I'm really looking forward to to have him on come on Legend Lore or Gavin or something okay. soon and, and we can babble so to speak the other one i want would like to to have on an interview talk to is ann brown yep those are are, are people i really would like to to have on, on okay on, uh, coming back in the community so to speak i know that paul is in the community because he's he, i've seen he start popping up on on um, Discord, and he had a, a really interesting Greyhawk population project that was kind of cool. That that I would love to for him to come on and talk about and living Greyhawk, of course, and a bunch of other stuff too. Jimmy, you need to throw me under the bus. I mean, I'm not throwing you under the bus. Well, no, because I mean, you're looking at if you're talking about in the Greyhawk community. I mean, we got you know. Th through the stuff we do for the channels and all that, I got plenty of people that will play in games, but trying right. to introduce them into the community since I, oh, wow. Well, okay. Hey, you know, even if it's just, even if it's just for an appearance, um, you know, I, th I think that you would benefit someone like an Elisa Teague, who I think um, has got some, she has got her, you know, her business acumen is in multiple areas and all that. And I know she's just made a, you know, another change in the career and all that. And so someone like her that is heavily involved with the gaming side, who I think would be a benefit. If she has not played in a game, you should reach out to her. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Troy, I have tried, I've tried that. And Eric says that uh, that probably won't happen. But Eric will be here next Sunday night, so we'll talk about that uh, later on. But yeah, uh, Lisa Stevens uh, uh, was, a, was a name. Mm -hmm. So, yep. uh, Robert and Robert, uh, you know, could be a could be. And a B Dave would have been my choice. <laughs> What's that? So, B Dave Walters would have been oh, my okay. choice. Okay, yeah. Yeah. for sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, uh, the, the issue is, is you've had like so many cool people involved <laughs> already that it's hard to choose. Like I would have, like you know, like you've had Ed. Uh, you know, Jeff Grubb, even you have Roger E. Moore, yeah. uh, Stephen Winter, like some incredible guests. And I'm just like trying to like scrub through <laughs> my mind of anyone who's contributed to D&D that you haven't had on yet. And I just can't find anyone in particular. But like pie in the sky stuff, like maybe someone like Brennan Lee Mulligan or uh, Anna Prosser Robinson. Um, oh, wow. But I mean, I, I you know, I think if uh, B. Dave uh, seems to be really interconnected in like approachable i think that's a really awesome uh shout as someone to kind of try and get in so i have a, a new connection um that uh, i'm working on and that's uh, uh and we've we're attempting to do something on uh i'm gonna have another uh just you know a dm's round table end of october at some point and that's tanya the past cipher off tier she's agreed to come on so mm -hmm. i got her uh and, and the reason i'm asking this um so, uh, so here are my strikeouts. Will Wheaton, <laughs> I, James Marsters. I want Spike because I'm Buffy crazed guy, but he's all over the world right now. And Jason Muse. I try uh, Jane Silent Bob, you know, because I'm from Jersey, but they're touring because of their movie now. Uh, I'm trying. Todd Kenrick. I don't know if he's going to be able to because he works for D and D now, and though they don't, Mike Merles isn't allowed to, really allowed to come on either because of that. I, it's the, I think they have a contractory thing where they don't go on other streams. Uh, employees of uh, of uh, you know that that yeah. are on the D and D channel. And, uh, the reason I, Bruce Cam, I, I I tried Bruce Campbell too. That was a real shot in the dark. Hey, why not go out there? Why not Wheaton? There's... Wheaton's just too 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 mm -hmm. tough. The Merles and them and some of the D&D, &D, the Watsy, they're just not doing cons anymore. They're being directed 
to not even go to cons. So when he went, when he goes to Gary Con, he goes on his own behalf, correct? He didn't even go. Mike Rolls was there last year. Was met, he there last year? I met with so him. So then he went on his own. Yep. Yeah, he, he was went on his own. On his own. Yep. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yep. And the reason I'm bringing this up, you say, why the hell are you bringing this up here? It's because I want to talk about, we've got almost 100 people on, right in between. We're going to have some other, uh, uh, is coming in a little bit. I want to talk about the next fundraiser for next year, February. And this is what I, the, 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 we've done. Some really cool things. We did Derby Dragons last year. We raised 20000 plus dollars. How do we top that? That's a lot of money, it. right? Yeah. Don't put me yeah. on. Could, uh, <laughs> a Matt Mercer might come. Well, yeah. Something? So, <laughs> no, no, seriously, this is my idea. Yeah. Next year's, we have a theme. Next year's theme is just legends. I'm going to invite every single big name I know and put them on every single stream. So I'm going to invite Ed Greenwood. I'm going to invite Jeff Grubb. I'm going to invite all of them, every single one. And we're going to put them all throughout all these highlighted streams and see, you know, it'll be the le it'll be legends of the game playing for three straight days. That's my idea. What do you think? I think it's a great well, idea as long as you can get them to, you know, get up that early or stay up that yeah. late. Well, it's only one. They'll each be in one stream, right? You know, they'll each be participating in one stream. So, hey, Nightheart. Great to see I, you all. I'd, I'd love to see that. I actually had the pleasure of interviewing Jeff Grubb at Jamacon, and I begged awesome. him to hey, play man. the Spelljammer game. <laughs> and he was just like... No, thank you. Yeah, he so, Jeff's if awesome. If you can negotiate that, then that would be awesome. So I had Ed would Ed's already in. I already talked to Ed. So yeah. Ed, Jeff Grubb, and Jim Ward did the Wizards Three discussion, which is only a couple months ago, and they had a good time, and they would be back. So that's why I'm asking because I want to make it not only legends in the old school format, but legends that are of big names that are on stream, that are streaming like Dave Walters or whatever. And I think with that combined, we could. Maybe surpass the twenty thousand dollars that we raised uh, last time, which uh, we were, a lot of us were shocked. So good to see you, Ann. Hopefully, uh, the whole crew's doing well at Nightheart. Um, I really appreciate the raid. And we're talking about Virtual Crayon Three Prelude, and we're just throwing out some things. Um, so, Duff, you think that's a good idea, right? Yep. All right. That was that's I'm the man my... of many words. <laughs> and that'll be next February, everyone. Just wanted to throw that out there. Um, you know, I, I'm going. Hey, Bill, Bill, and Mr. Crafters on everyone. Uh, I, I'm throwing, I'm throwing that out there now, just to know that's what's in my head for after what. What am I going to do after GraalCon? Before GaryCon. So yeah, I'll, I'll be forward. tied up with GaryCon. And you're going to throw that at me too. Oh, what's man. that? I said I'll be tied up with GaryCon. Oh, I know. Whole, cause, yeah, and I'll yeah. It's going to be awesome. So uh, uh, we'll, you know what? That deserves three wet heads on stream here. There we go. Three, three J where had fumble. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, all right. Do any of you have questions about for for uh, of the rest of the group, or want we'll to throw it out to the community as far as what you'd like to discuss? I don't want to hog all the time, Anna. Well, like I can mention I will have a. Um, um, well, we do that later. Uh, okay. I was thinking, uh, how many seminars do we have? Because I, I'm I'm going to have one, but we can go into the detail. That I'm more kind of curious. How many seminars do we have? Because we talked about the games for a little bit. Yeah. Are there other types of streams? Meaning we have Mike Disney yep. having awesome when he's doing all his awesome paint work and stuff. So, oh, so there you. we have another category, crafting. And 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 then do we have some other? Stuff yes, we do. I, yes, we yeah. do. I, 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 um, if you're okay with that, I'm going to hold that off to the second hour. Okay, because that's what I'm going to really talk yep, about the perfect. big names that are yep. participating. Yeah, now I think there's that's, five. That's good... I think there's okay. five yeah. total seminars, if I recall correctly. Yep. And that yep. also counts yep. what Dewey Carthon Rick Miller's doing. Yep. Okay. Five, yep. Five, five, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I think it's turtle. five. Yeah. Yep. So. Um, Total, and we'll, we'll discuss. That. So That's I was a good going point. to say, how yeah. many of you uh, are doing uh, homebrew stuff when you're running it, so to speak, or how many are, are running a classic, so to speak? Yeah. Robert, Robert Phantom, how many? Your mix, right? Uh, as far as the uh, adventures for Greyhawk, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're they're actually for the first time. This is the first time I'm actually using uh, published adventures. One of them is. Uh, the aforementioned White Plume Mountain. The other one is a uh, Troller Games uh, adventure, Shadows of a Green Sky, that 
I'm adapting to Greyhawk. Oh, cool. That That's an oh. advantage when you use a, a, an established rule set that is cool, that you can, from yeah. a publisher, you can tap into their, <laughs> their kind of treasure chest of, of modules and stuff too. So, yeah. Cool. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, Jimmy, what what you what, what you will be serving? Uh, things that and, you cooked up yourself, or, or would you? I think it's to... a little well. So, yeah. I think it's a little bit of both. It's a hybrid uh -huh. because this there's some in, some of the information that I'm using is from one of those, uh, you know, one of the ancient modules of lore. Um, but I'm only pulling pieces of it yeah. with some other, yeah, other stuff that's out there. So it's a mix, mm -hmm. but it's still it's still relating into the getting the storyline set yeah. into the keep, I think, mm -hmm. at least I hope. So yeah. we'll see how that pulls together. And Robert, how do you tackle uh, the, the gray space and yeah. stuff? Meaning, are there any official gray space lore or, or right. modules, adventures to tap into at all? Or, or... There, there are a couple of examples. Um, yeah. At the uh, at Jamacon, the, uh, the convention that uh, we ran uh, not so long ago, uh, Captain Ron, as uh, you all may know him, um, yeah, he's on too. Ran a a a Greyhawk Reborn session that was uh, based around a an old module um, okay. that featured yeah. a Neogi Death Spider from Spelljammer on the world of of o Earth, and mm -hmm. uh, that I you know I can see I half considered stealing his module and uh, running it for uh, Greyhawk Con, but uh, then I considered doing something a bit more original. Uh, initially, before the rule set recently released in the Spelljammer 5v box set. I was going to use my own personalized rule set that I've been using for the last four or, well, four, four or so years um, since I started running Spelljammer in 5e. Uh, but with the new official rule set, I mainly defer in games like this. In my house games, I, I do all kinds of wild homebrew personalized uh, stuff, particularly like using, um, uh, there's a, a member of the Spelljammer com community called Sessadrix, who has this uh, brilliant supplement called um, Wild Jammer that is based off of the rule set for Dark Matter. I'm not sure if uh -huh. you've heard of Dark Matter, but it's I've a, heard uh, of it. Yeah. I've yeah. It's kind it. of like a, a sci fi 5e compatible um, setting and system. Um, I like to pick bits and pieces from there, particularly for like uh, roles on the ship, because um sometimes when you play spell jammer um there's 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 a little bit for the helmsman to do but for the rest of the crew if they're not on a uh, a weapon station they're kind of sitting around waiting for the ship to get close enough for them mm -hmm. to do something yeah uh, so i do like to sprinkle those uh role rules in there as well and i'll be also yeah. introducing uh in the uh the encounter because every good one shot needs a fun encounter um a homebrewed boss for the for the party to fight so that should okay, cool. that should be yeah. fun by the way i should I have... not i shouldn't have to say this to everyone please like follow all the streams please give everyone in the, who's going to yeah. be participating in this a follow and also the neogi nest is treasures of greyhawk has an adventure there if you want to know what are the neogi are in here all right there are in there are in treasures of greyhawk if you want to know more See, about then them. they're official greyhawk yeah they're official greyhawk yeah. absolutely yes, yeah i absolutely. have one more question that i want to ask please go for it that is as a one that's going to stream my very first game <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm kind of curious jay has these kind of tokens that people can pledge and then they could they could put in and and then you 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 give out uh, like uh, special hero points and 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 so on and so forth what kind of other interactive functions or or, or twitch related specialities do you use in your game so to speak like some sort of hero points some, some public interaction or something like that that you as a dm use twitch to or, or or to to interact with your audience more so to speak so robert do you have any so I'm I'm actually adopting Jay's uh, hero points and special hero points. Uh huh. Uh, and I, I did speak with Jay beforehand to you know make sure. Oh, absolutely, that, man. Uh, yeah. No worries. <laughs> but, no worries. But, but I mean, running castles and crusades, it, it seemed like the most logical thing to do. Mm -hmm. It just works. Yeah. It fits. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And, and Jimmy, what's meaning you? You're an established. You've been doing this for quite some time at, at a really high level. So you should have a whole slew of systems. I'm, and I was going to say, tech. which platform do you want me to talk about? Oh, so, there you see, there yeah. you go. Yeah. Oh, there's multiple ones. Yeah. So you have not only you know before Twitch went into their point system and all that, Stream Elements, which is the platform that I use, has their store. 
and I've got all the benefits out there based on your viewing experience or, you know, when you sub to the channel, you get more points. That's stuff that you can turn in to affect the gameplay. Mm -hmm. And then we have stream loots too, which is a card system kind of that you can purchase the packs and get some of the same cool. benefits, but we have, we have merch set up in there so that if you buy certain, you know, you put cards together. So I, you know, yeah, there are multiple ways to get audience audience participation into the game will yeah. we be using him for the show hmm. okay uh yeah i <laughs> probably will have some little streamline for that this show i was honestly was just going to keep it kind of i'm not mean mean it's just kind of simple and laid back because we are late and everybody's going to be coming hyped up from the lovely joust show <laughs> that will be playing beforehand yeah okay mm -hmm. you know and so yeah. we'll you know cap things off before we all go betty bye mm -hmm. uh but i used so my stuff but i'll be honest with rambling on here a little bit i like it's using okay. it more when i'm doing stuff like jay's when we do the stuff in february the donations then we put that into high gear because okay. yeah i match that to give to Jay for the charity event. So okay, cool. Yeah. We we uh you know last year was just like so unbelievable the community. Yeah. And I want to yeah. say this too with the community. Uh, this is the top most we've had as far as signups. This is a great ratio and I really appreciate it everyone. Now there's a little bit more to do still. But you know and I know a lot of you are busy and a lot you know but if we can fill a couple more key slots it would be wonderful. Yeah. So uh so, so Mike, do you use any any special tricks? I Meaning, you're not running a game, but you still want to interact with the audience and 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 stuff and and so on. What do, kind of technical or, or little kind of interesting tricks do you use to 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 interact with rather than just like me mapping lives and just babble with them and answer a question and not using any any functionality or or, or smart tricks, so to speak? Oh uh, no, the only thing I do is talk about the miniature. Mm -hmm. that i'm that i'm painting like yeah. uh like i know i'm gonna be painting a paladin and it's somebody somebody very special paladin so uh we'll probably be talking about her and her backstory a little bit yeah and then um other than that i just i just talk to the audience and uh but you work with a lot of cool camera angles and a cool camera setup and stuff so so you work on on, on that part quite a bit and overlays and stuff that are kind of cool everything i keep everything set up so that way i don't have to keep working on it ah, I'm not so you, like you a, set it up and that's it so to speak you yep, don't touch it okay yep i yep. don't touch it after mm -hmm. that i'm not like yeah. Jay and I'm, yeah oh yeah you that's guys smart. keep moving your cameras around and everything <laughs> yeah oh you need one from the ceiling i hear that every yeah. freaking week it's driving me crazy <laughs> Driving yep. me nuts here. As we got, uh, so we got some more, uh, got some more coming on in here. And if uh, you're all welcome to stay as long as you want, I know some people yep. like Jimmy can't wait to get out of here. No, uh, I've got, actually no, I've got to go entertain. <laughs> so, yep. but I'll be, I'll be watching though. So I want to thank, oh, thank for man. allowing me to be on, and I will see everybody uh, next week. Yeah, so and uh, we'll try and get that last seat refilled for you. Yep. And uh, yep. Jimmy, thank you so very much for coming on. Good seeing Players everybody. Rejects, everyone. Have a good one. So let's welcome. Uh, we got. Uh, oh my gosh! Uh, here, I'm gonna put you center square top because you're just so over the. There you go. All right, so all right, we got we got uh, we got Captain Ron and Jay Stepinski from Greyhawk Reborn. Good to see you both. Welcome. Hey Jay, how you doing? Uh, I'm staying out of trouble. <laughs> Good evening. For the most part, uh, yes. That's too bad. That's too bad. <laughs> and um, Duncan Jousley, the Cromulent, has joined us as well. So, Indeed, sir. Yes. Good evening to you all. <laughs> <laughs> the great herald of of uh, of the awesome. the free city. Of Altamira yes, I am the uh, the uh, preeminent herald of Altamira, as well as the guild master of the Town Criers Guild, newly <laughs> formed. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, you're welcome. Uh, it's, uh, now, it's there's not enough people shouting out information, and now I will organize them to shout out more efficiently. For a small fee. <clears throat> so Duncan is looking for you. You can contact him. Uh, Tim, if you want to put that in chat, what the email address is, that would be great. Uh, he's looking for, and they, we don't want, we don't want life stories. Okay. A couple lines, a couple lines. Indeed. In it, and it'll it's hard to it. yell a life story. So it should be one or two or three sentences of pertinent information that you would like Absolutely. spoken out loud. 
with great vitality and verb by yours truly. Could be your business, could be maybe a message to uh, your love and you wanted to publicly have it announced, but your voice is too measly and squarely. And so you need somebody <laughs> with a loud voice to do it. Perfect opportunity. With such a venue and of grandness as this, romance oh. and drama is sure to follow. Oh my gosh. Uh, and, and also, no about it. his other personality, uh, the longest name ever in the history of a d, d character, and it is Sir Reginald Rathmore David Errol Trampier IV, Defender of the Faith and Vanquisher of the Unrighteous. Such a great man. Such a great man. <laughs> is also, and I only say this, and I won't tell anyone else, is seated number one again this year. As well he should be. Yes, in the jail. Uh, I, I, I'm hoping uh, he may fare better this year than last yes. time. A first-round defeat to Josh Death Dealer, who was intoxicated at the time, was very embarrassing. Yes, well, it was embarrassing except for those that bet correctly. And <laughs> he, bought his, he bought his wife a very nice present, and uh, Josh Death Dealer owed a lot of money. It was, it was excellent. Yep. So, uh, as we all know, Tim is... Got that acting background and uh, does some really wonderful things. Who's and this uh, Tim? Yes, exactly. <laughs> we will be back to Tim. Let's welcome our two Grouch Reborn uh, friends here. Who uh, you guys really stepped up? How like 17, 15 to seventeen events this year? Crazy. Something like that. I was just counting them. Um, yeah, they're almost all sold out. So. I, I noticed know, we had about we have a couple of seats left. Yeah, I noticed we had about seven. Uh, and now you unplugged again. Yep. Done it again. And he doesn't even realize it. No. Nope, he doesn't realize it. No. Yes, we understand, Jay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we understood that. I did it again. Yeah, you did it again. Yep. I had to use hand and arm signals. So. Yep. Was that plan? Like we had seven seats like open up uh, this today. Was that planned that people would were holding those or whatever? I noticed a whole no, bunch. No, no, no. I think people just may have dropped. So we okay. have some stuff available. Uh, you know, Friday at nine. Let me flip over There's there. A seat open Friday at two, and uh, a couple seats Friday night. And I think that's almost it. We got Brewfest here Friday at two. Okay. Yep. Um, one one slot open. Yeah. One slot open. Two slots open for Battle of Life and uh, uh, and Light Stanza. That is Friday at eight. Yeah. Uh, one book. We can of actually take it. Yeah, we can actually take two and book of cylinders because for some reason it's only five slots were available. We can run with up to six. So. Do you want me to edit that now? Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah, that'd be great. We're gonna Maybe do that. Don't everyone's I'm gonna show you some tricks of the trade here. So uh yeah, I'll do that here as we, we go. speak. Very here. Exciting. Yeah, I'm <laughs> under registration. So uh what other ones do you know that are open here? Uh just taking a look. Um I think there's one seat open again in Brewfest Sunday at two o'clock. Okay. And uh, let me see which which one am I Everything looking at again? Sold out. Yeah. Uh, are you I, looking at uh Book of Cylinders. Book of Cylinders. Got it. Manage. Edit. Yeah. Okay. Five. Got it. Max tickets. Six. Yeah. Done. You got an extra seat I, there. I think word Perfect. might be getting out around about Brewfest. That's that's the one that I'm running, and it's it's not a bait and switch. I mean, it starts out in Crylor. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. You do not need to be part of the Greyhawk community, uh, Greyhawk Reborn community to sign up for these, okay? Just note that, everyone. You don't need to. You can be introduced in this. I'm assuming character sheets provided, correct? Yeah, if you need a pre-generated character, um, we have a whole host of pre-generated characters to choose from. Um, we also have, for the some of the higher-level stuff, we made some fifth-level pre-generated characters. Great. Um, all of our games use 5e, so, uh, you know, that's that's the only wrinkle a little bit. So, you know, you got to have some familiarity with 5e. Um, just Fest. makes it go smoother. Brewfest on Sunday, October at 2 p.m. One seat as well. Yep. yep. So there you go. Um, so, uh, Ron, how was your interaction with um, JammerCon? How'd that go? 
It was it was great. So I guess my role was being a, sort of a, a front of house guy, a GM, to 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 reality check the back of house people on on what we need to put on a uh, an, an effective platform and have you know with signups. You know, just you know, I don't want to get too lost in the weeds. We talked about what platform to use, whether to use TTE, whether to use Warhorn, you know, things, things like that. But it was it was a great community to work with. I mean, I'm a, I'm an old time Spelljammer guy, and so so I love the fact that I didn't realize how big the Spelljammer community was still out there. That there were still people playing Spelljammer. Like, I thought I was the only weirdo that was excited about the new stuff <laughs> coming out. Um, so it was it was a great team to work with. Uh, all the between all the streamers, all the GMs, the the back of house, the front of house. It was a uh, it was awesome. Um, it will be coming again, hopefully not soon, but so we have a little more ample time to to figure out what stuck, what will work, and uh, and build it. Yeah, it's gonna time... be a thing. You've heard it here. It's gonna be a thing. Yeah, time time dependent. I mean, I may have uh, told people there was gonna be a jammerless, but I don't know how <laughs> likely that's gonna look now. Um, but yeah, no, Ron was totally indispensable. Uh, Ron and Zarathan's experience and advice really helped us actually put the con together. Excellent. Yeah. I, and uh, it, it seemed to be a great success. One day, I mean, you know, which is great. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, there can be some more collaboration there, um, in the future. And that's a great thing. You know, and if we can get some of you to want to participate in this fundraiser coming up in February, that'd be awesome too, because, you know, we were, like I said, we really want to crank that out and go for, go for it as far as surpassing that $20,000 mark this year. So, uh, Jay, uh, Jay, what are your, what are your hopes for this third annual one here we're doing for at Groudcon 3? Um, really just to expose more people to what we're doing, expose more people to Greyhawk. Hopefully we'll get some, uh, you know, word of mouth and uh, internet advertising will spread. And we'll get some more folks uh, interested not in what we do, but what the greater Greyhawk community has been doing to keep the world alive. Well said. Well said. Um, you'd be surprised how... And you guys probably see this, especially on Facebook. You you beat you beat a beat it beat it beat it on the same sites all the time, and no one reads what you post. And they're like, "Oh, I didn't know that that was Greyhawk was live streamed on like all these channels. I've been posting for three years. You know, uh, you, you understand that it's tough. It's a real yeah, challenge yeah. Um, to try and yeah, Orchid. It's just you know, there's a lot of great great things out there. Uh, and there's a Big Max on too. Um, and how to reach people, how to literally reach them. And I'll say this, there's a lot of people that in our community that came over from virtual, from virtual Gary Con or virtual Grout Cons. That, that's, where we, that's where we made the connection, going all the way back to that first 2020 Gary Con where I had 10 days to put together six events, live stream, and then you know, then Anna's like, hey, let's run Greyhawk Con next month. Yeah. I'm like, no, Anna, we're not running it in a month. No, we're going to run it in October. <laughs> I got uh, enthusiastic. Yes. I um, stop thinking when I get... When we first when we first put yeah. this together uh, three years ago, and just, uh, yep. it's just, but reaching people is so difficult. That is. Yeah, it, it is. It, it is. is. And you just got to keep putting yourself out there and, you know, keep keep plugging away really yeah and that's been, that's been the that's been the ultimate challenge and uh that, that's how you heard about greyhawk reborn a uh, big uh dig baddie says that's how you heard about greyhawk reborn gary Con for the win well that's excellent that's excellent so thanks awesome, patrick. Yeah. thanks patrick for doing that for uh, big mac as well i so. reach people by shouting <laughs> <laughs> so tim the ever mysterious tim another hat dming Talk about your event coming up bright and early Saturday morning called, and it's at 7 a.m. I got to produce this, so it's I'm like, not in the right attire. I something. can't. Well, uh, we need to know. Called the reverse, yeah. the reverse dungeon. There's a problem for this poor tribe. Oh. It, from the, the characters are from Did a tribe. Someone. I've got. And the poor things are being assaulted by these mass murdering psychotics. What's a goblin to do? But they got to resist the best they can. Of course, it's like. So the characters are goblins. 
Yes, the characters, the four players are goblins. And Robert, good luck. <laughs> Uh, I think we know a lot of the people in the community in this game. Yes. We have uh, oh, Antiquitous is in this, so he's going to die. Yeah. He dies every stream. Uh, Jonathan Richard Dawes and Dickerus, right? Uh, yes. We got to talk about his games and William Henry Dvorak, Giant yes. Stomp. Wow! Oh so, yeah, it's going to. The game's interesting. If if you pick to be just a, a warrior, you actually have three characters. Oh okay. So you have a larger chance of surviving. Uh, <laughs> And if you want a special, if you're either the shaman or witch doctor or sorcerer, you have one character. So uh, I thought it was indicorous was 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 funny because I sent out some an article so they could look over it and make a decision. He was thinking about maybe doing something special, but when he saw the only way to be chief is if you're a warrior, he's like, "No, I'm a warrior." So he's got his he's already got the hierarchies. He's ready to go up up in rank. So very cool. So I'm gonna it put. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, I, I'm looking forward. To, awesome. I have a lot of ex expectations of the players to make it hilarious and awesome. We need to get together on that. I'll just be there. We need to get together on what you need to send me over to, so I can set it up for stream. Okay. Yep. Um, let's talk about Indicarus again. And I've just I've, I I feel like I'm banging my head here, everyone. But he's got his two events, and they are they are. Living Greyhawk based, Zeef family. He's got one sign up, man. That's Saturday at 3 p.m. EDT. All right. And then Piety. And that is uh, that is 3 p.m. Sunday EDT. He's got one sign up for each. He's a great DM, and the games are awesome. Zeef is really some great content. If you have free time slots to put to sign up for them, I would really appreciate it. If you could. And, and to play in one of those games. Now, bipolar, I got you, man. No, no problem. I, I, um, all good. Thank you so very much, and we'll see you. We'll see you, and thanks. And uh, see you bright and early on Saturday, on Friday, kicking off second event of of, of the con. So, yeah. um, what surprises there can we? Uh, uh, Greyhawk Reborn, can we? Uh, can we uh, see coming up at some of these events? What's kind of cool? Well, a lot of these are old events. The one that's kind of cool that Ron worked on, he could talk about a little bit more, was the Shrine of Evil Chaos, which is sort of an adaptation to keep on the Borderlands. Ron, you want to talk about that a little bit because that's got some neat wrinkles in it. Yeah. So one of the one of the one of the things I like doing is um, taking you know, call them adaptations, are basically taking some of the old classics, bringing them up to to current standards, getting all the stats and everything leveled up for uh, for fifth edition. So the, the neat thing about the Shrine of Evil Chaos, I mean, the history of the place is just is so awesome that, you know, a cult moves in, they run up humanoids, players come in, murder hobo the place. Another year later, another another evildoer comes in. So this is sort of like the uh, the local Castellan trying to get ahead of things and, and sending a party in to uh, to kill the big bad before you can run up the minions. So it's just, it's it's not a crawl, it just goes right to killing the big bad. Which nice. I think is a pretty a pretty neat take on it. So you're not doing all the crawls between the multiple levels and dealing with the goblins and the escalation. It's just I'm just going to go in and kill everything, and it's a fun game. It translates well to the VTT. Um, my particular game, I'll stump for Brewfest. I mean, it's 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 the back the back end of it. The hook is they're they're in Krylor for the for the uh, for the toxin and. Fog rolls in, and you end up going someplace that takes you when fog rolls in, if you know what I mean, without too many spoilers. Ooh. Um, so that's that's always for for those players who are looking for more than just like just hack and slash. There's there's opportunities for good role playing. There's definitely some creepy vibes to it. Um, it plays better running it at like midnight, but you know afternoon slots work just as well. Um, I may or may not be using insanity rolls in it. Oh, um, we'll see. Th those those who lean into the voices in their heads shall earn great boons from the lands. That's all I'm saying. Nice. It sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> I got a slot in each. Yes, it, uh, there's one slot open for each of those. So uh, yeah. if you uh, want to hop in on those, 
another one um, that um, I don't want it to get canceled, but uh, I talked to the uh, – and these were late sign-ins for these games. Um, ESA 8-02 Old Debts all right, now uh, by June Solar. And I was talking with them uh, um, today. We, uh, we have two sign-ups. needs a minimum of three. So that game is that game is actually um, that's the one that's risking. The other one has three signups already out of six. So uh, and that's the five E version. So that one's going to go off, but the other one may not. So we would need here this one Sunday, October second at two p.m. Three of six. So this one's good to go. But this one we need one more, and that's Saturday, October first at seven p.m. Need one more sign up for that, and preferably <laughs> I'd love to have that by tomorrow. At the early, you know, tomorrow morning, uh, so that um, they can plan. All right, just letting you know that would be another great one to have someone hop in on, so we could keep the event running. Um, so, uh, so gentlemen, uh, the three who hopped in here, Duncan and Ron and Jay, what are you, what are you guys looking forward to most? Besides something you're running, or something else? Uh, well, the ground joust. Of <laughs> Everyone says that. Uh, yes. Everyone says that. I mean. I mean, last year we had some ne'er do wells who previous winners show up and create some sort of drama, and one can only suspect that could <laughs> happen again. <coughs> Mike, yes. Well, we'll have that again. I'm going to explain that shortly, and but let's welcome John Phoenixi Walkie, who's kicking off the con. Hello, how you doing, everybody? Good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> kicking off the con bright and early. Ready to uh, go? Yeah. Uh, at 7 a.m. on Friday, <laughs> it is sold yes. out, which is awesome. Uh, it's very excited. Fear and loathing in the Dreadwood, I believe, right? And that's uh, right. That's right. Um, so uh, welcome. We got uh, we got two members of Grock Reborn. We got Mike Disney. We got Rob Phantom, Anna, and we got the ever mysterious Tim slash Duncan Jowsey, the Cromulent here with us tonight. I do want to say uh, I do apologize for my accent. It's a fake, of obviously, and you know I know people have the real <laughs> ones. I'm sorry. I only apologize in advance. <laughs> and you never apologize for anything. Not to you. <laughs> <laughs> So let's see if I know uh, Robert. You're in this game too. Yes. Yes. Uh, Dennis <laughs> Calendar, big name in the community too. So there you go. You got some nice, uh, nice names in here. You also have two on the wait list as well. Um, and you, John, you know how to get to that, right? You generate a, you generate an event sheet, and it'll show you all the all the people. Yep. Okay. That sounds good. good. Thank you. So uh, tell us a little bit about your game. Fear and loathing in the Dreadwood. Okay, there is one paragraph in the Ghosts of Saltmarsh book which seized me by the innards and just yanked me into a world of imagination and ideas. And that was in the surrounding areas section of the book. And it is about a small, a small coppice of trees known as the Dreadwood, which has a certain, um, you know, interesting um person living at its center with, uh, with her minions around her um as we have the fabulous um night hag granny nightshade um in the center of the dreadwood there and the wood elves and uh, the uh, the nearby uh, unicorns and the the various uh, local people have been uh, you know patrolling the borders and keeping things at bay for the most part, but recently there's been an amassing of Granny Nightshade's forces, which is rising up and moving towards the edges of the wood, closer and closer, threatening to overwhelm the sleepy little sleep, uh, fishing village of Saltmarsh, where absolutely nothing ever happens. And they are somewhat perturbed by that, until a somewhat eccentric um, wood gnome um, druid stroke shaman known as Dr. Gonzo, has discovered something interesting. A particular breed of mushroom which allows one to dip in and out of the ethereal plane, and they are going to use that to infiltrate Granny Nightshade's fortress, to get behind her amassed forces in the forest there, and find just what it is that has emboldened her so much, and take it out and save Saltmarsh. <laughs> What's that? Like? All in three hours. <laughs> are, are, are you are Absolutely. you are you invisible when you dip in and out of the ethereal plane? Just curious. Good question. Um, to, to Granny Nightshade, no. So hopefully they don't come across her <laughs> with a true sight. But uh, yes, um, there are. Yeah, you know, depends. Depends what's looking. 
yes, hopefully, hopefully they'll be uh, out of sight of most of the nasties there. <laughs> it sounds like a fun one, and I really appreciate you uh, for the first time participating. Um, and... It's an absolute pleasure. Yeah, I've I've been looking for just the chance to dive into that one paragraph for so long. Just that that description of the dread was just so amazing, um, and uh, I cannot wait to to play in that world. And um, the decision to use the ethereal plane um, is actually based on um, Japanese um, tradition and folklore, which is where I'm based. I'm over here in Japan, which is why I get that bright and early spot in the morning. <laughs> and um, uh, not, not as bad as it seems on my end. <laughs> nice e it's a nice evening slot for me. Um, but we will be um, using that, um, the Equinox, which was just last Friday. So Jay, if you could if you could make the con a week earlier next time. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, but the the equinox, which was just last Friday, um, is when the realms of the dead and the living are closest in Japan, and all families go to the family graves to pray to their ancestors because they are close at hand. I did not so know that. it was it was that little little uh, bit of uh, lore, um, you know, real world lore um, that inspired the use of the ethereal plane. That's really cool. I was I did not know about that. Mm. The, the, uh, the, during those times, is it once a year or twice a year because of the autumnal and the uh... yeah the autumnal and the vernal okay. equinoxes? Yeah, really cool. That's really really neat. John, what are you looking forward to? Um, oof, just a chance to play in a new community and um, to be involved with this uh, this massive event. And you know, it's been an absolute pleasure um, getting to know um, you and Anna and. Um, yeah, Tim was there as well, um, and um, <laughs> just an <Yeah. a> absolute, <laughs> absolute joy, joy to meet all of you this year. And um, yeah, it's really exciting to to meet some new players and um, run run a con game. This is my, my first time running a con game, and then the opener of the con itself as well. So it's, uh, so it's all yeah, very exciting stuff. And uh, you know, not no, it's just like running a normal stream, just you know, uh, just a little different with some you know. Some logos up and just uh, being part of the community. And that's just what we're trying to do here. And I really appreciate uh, you, you doing that. Um, thank you so very much. And just have fun with it. That's it. And, you know, great thing. Uh, so, Robert, uh, do you know who you're playing in John's game yet? No. Uh, okay. Not yet. So we haven't uh, yeah, it's so. okay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, um, I, know, uh, I know that's the one. Th um, it's a lot of people. And I, I don't know how you grow up. We boring guys do it. There's a lot that goes into con events all the contingencies give me uh, each, uh jay ryan give me each a challenge that you have putting all this together um well there's a lot of them um, <laughs> yeah well, one of them is uh certainly uh you know getting we're based mostly an author driven campaign so getting people to write um you know is always a big challenge mm -hmm. uh you know to, to write adventures because we can't use, you know, the Greyhawk IP unless the, the author is running the adventure or we've adapted something like we did with the Candlekeep uh, book and some of the other adventures. Um, so that's usually a pretty big challenge in terms of, you know, laying out the schedule because it's got to be, you know, people have to have written things and they have to be available. So, you know, from my perspective, it's always been more along those lines, getting enough wrangling gms is also you know a big a big challenge a lot of the time especially with uh you know we're coming out of covid which is great you know but you know yeah. for especially for live events it, it's the last couple of years have been a real challenge yeah <coughs> and a lot of people don't realize that i guess you have a, a previous contractor agreement with is it with watsi mm -hmm. uh, this is how you can no, keep, no, no we it, had a non-disclosure agreement Okay. For some of the the, the fifth edition rules, okay. the Dave Guerrero had entered into, but uh, okay. we have no relationship with with Watsi at all at this point. So it's just a matter of this is how you have to do it to stay without them, without someone coming after you. Is 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 you know you can't have someone write it and then someone else run it. Correct. Correct. Okay. okay. Wow. The dungeon master has to run their own adventures. So that, that's how we always interpret it. So you have to make a meaningful contribution. To the adventure to be a co-author okay so you can't just throw in a stat block okay. right so that that's how we've interpreted you know how to how to go about this ron what other challenges i think, yeah. I think for me the, the the biggest challenge is 
it, it's both a positive. It's 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 ultimately a positive. It's it's the new players. It's the folks who are new to organized campaign gameplay who may not be familiar with where to get our information on our on our Discord or on Facebook or on, and other various places. You know, you as an organization, you need new players to to drive it. But that's that's a lot of cat herding as well. Like you know when you know when you see those names in in the events, you're like, all right, this person knows what they're doing. Bam, they're D and D Beyond. I know who they are. They don't need anything but a token setup. And then you've got somebody who you don't know, and then you're trying to to reach out to them, email them, contact them, hit them up on Discord, and and they're just either not paying attention or ghosting you. And it's just like it, this isn't just a drop in. Bring your own like. PC. That's how you end up with with tieflings in our games. Um, <laughs> but so we, which are, tieflings are cool, but they just there's a place, having a place for them. But I think so that. But then, but then with those new players, and you get them in, and, and you see that that enthusiasm, like they like Greyhawk, which is they're here. They like Five E, which is why they're here, and they want they want something a little maybe a little different, a little more. I don't know, a little more personal than some of the other organized play systems, where it's just. GMs buying a, a an adventure on DTRPG and running them like you these are author run which is which is great um so I think it's just it's the it's the getting the new players in but then you don't know so you have to take the time because you don't know if that new player is somebody that's going to be your next GM that a year later is running three to four games for you at a right. con yeah and we've had a lot of people step up that have enjoyed what we're doing and. You know, we get new authors out of games, you know, semi-frequently. So it's to Ron's point, it's it's great. Excellent. Um, I, I always, you know, uh, I know how tough it is for me. I, and I'm I'm producing four, producing or DMing four, right? Um, now at uh, GaryCon, I've done six, seven. You know, it's just insane, and I, I don't want to go there. But you guys are doing like 15, 16. It's a lot <laughs> over those days, and I, we really, the community really appreciates it. Really does, and uh, I know you are. Uh, you doing stuff at Game Hole this year? Game Hole Con? Yeah. No, or just, I don't think so. But no, not this year. Yeah. Gar but Gary Con. Gary Con, we're planning on if we can find some rooms. Okay. Uh, it's been, you know, <laughs> oh, oh in uh, person. Real. We were trying to get out there in person. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are, we are desperately, I think, looking for hotel rooms in the area. So yeah. we have to talk about that. And see what we can finagle. I will be there. Anna will be there. Robert, you gonna be there? Oh, cool. You doing Gary Con next year? I I am going to be at Gary Con. I already have my room. Awesome. awesome. Very cool. Yep. So some of us will be there definitely. Uh, yep. That that's fantastic. So uh, the panel uh, up here. Anyone have uh, questions for the rest of the panel uh, individuals before I? Uh, Discuss some of the uh, seminars that we're going to be. I uh, just take a question for Please. for the uh, uh, Greyhawk uh, Reborn guys. Uh, are you still only Keoland, or has the campaign expanded out in into other areas as well? So we've expanded to some other areas. Um, a lot of it central centers in the Sheldamar Valley. Yeah. But we uh, we just adapted uh, the fifth edition White Plume Mountain, oh, so we're making cool. a little foray into the. Uh, a guy, Joe DeBarry, did that adaptation for it. Did a great job. Oh, nice. Um, so we're, 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 we're making a little foray into the Shield Land slash Bandit Kingdoms over there. Um, so but mainly mainly, mainly Sheldamar, you know, which is, you know, Jeff, Keelan, Sterich, uh, you know, that whole neighborhood. But we, we, we occasionally will author run things, you know, outside that area. So there is no technical limitation. Meaning, an author could write an adventure for any part in 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 Greyhawk, and and then write nope, it. And... We, correct. Okay. We encourage people to explore other areas and other regions. Yeah. You know that we haven't really oh, you know, don't have the 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 game in game history, so you don't have to like really adapt. Um, because we're set in uh, I guess we're in six twenty two cy now. Mm -hmm. Our yeah. our campaign. That's yeah. so, so close to my 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 time too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, definitely expand outside of Keela, and I think that's. I know I've. One of my one of my initial concerns is I, I I've spent a lot of time playing in in the other place before I came back to Greyhawk, which is where I started out from when I was ten and just killing people in Scourge of the Slave Lords. <laughs> um, but I think that that I've sort of landed on the free city and divers, like that sort of yeah. that near div region, which which I love. 
there's so much political intrigue, especially if you look at the history between divers and the free city and just like, you know, the, the fort sitting right there on the border. It's like, whose farm is this? You know, you can play it off as a, a little political power play between the two of them. So I, I like that. We have authors that are running things in Salt Marsh, like Jason, in the Bandit Kingdoms. Um, so I think a lot of the older stuff is, is definitely Keoland centric. But I think a lot of us newer authors coming in don't want to inadvertently step on any plot landmines because we don't know who the daughter of the innkeeper was in somewhere that we've never <laughs> heard of before. But the players do, and they'll tell you when you're oh, wrong. Yes. Yeah, oh you know? yeah. So, I think, yeah. so it's nice to sort of like, well, now, now this is my sandbox. And yeah. if someone wants to play in sort of my sandbox, they've got to check in with, you know, with me to make sure that there's no plot landmines. So I, I like that as a, as a yeah. newer, newer <clears throat> author. Yeah. And especially with um, the, the Candlekeep adaptations, um, that was a big project for us. It's just getting a, a lot of mileage out of those. Then there's, there's no library, a big library in, in Keoland. You need the Great Library of Greyhawk to, to home base that. And then, you know, you can play in the, the Cron Hills, you can play over in, um, uh, Brightlands, you know, Brightlands. Bright, we had a couple of adventures set in the Brightlands from Candlekeep. So. Brightlands, yeah, yeah. Um, down into into divers, and over into um, some other places. So Irene Tony Win Winslow Brill's one was uh, the last one she had in there. Uh, uh, Xanthoria, or whatever it was for Zuktmoy. Yeah, Xanthoria. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I ran that in the yeah. sus. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it, it, it's it's funny when good. you said that the players will tell you that you're wrong. The funny thing that happens in, in like my campaign too, like homebrew, I come <laughs> up with everything, but occasionally when I like, oh, I'm not sure, I, I just go go with it, and then people, no, 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 that's wrong. So yep. So players <laughs> always remember better than than you as do as a as a DM. So and yeah. the funny thing is, so like players that have been playing for a while will have older adventure records with like favors from those people. I don't even know who those people are, and they've got a favor <laughs> from them. Yeah. So okay, sure you can do that. I don't, I don't know. You need a librarian that can keep track of everything like that and put it in in some sort of web database that the DMs can. Like you need yeah. to have like a lore consistency group or something like that. Yeah. Want to show you all something? We have everyone on. By the way, if anyone needs to depart, please just to say, hey, I got to go. Thank you so very much. You know, uh, we'll keep you. Got a couple others uh, going to be hopping on. Hopefully, um, under attend. If you want to know, you're not sure what's going on highlighted streams. Here comes, here's the channel guide and watch this. This is the great Josh Pop, Zarathon coding. Oh, well, here, this is all in EDT. I click here. It goes right to Phoenix's channel. Okay. Oh. All right. It's all set in there. So whatever's going on live stream in Graalcon, um, oops, I just shut it out. Dummy me. Uh, all you need to do is click on it. And uh, and and you will be able to go right to the live stream that's going on at the time. Okay, real quick as we go through the schedule here, Phoenix he kicks it off. Gray space. Phoenix will be raining to him, and then Mike will be hitting it up here. Uh, so Mike, uh, we're going to be painting a Powell in mini, correct? And we got you for two hours. Yep, that's okay. right. Uh, that'll be seminar number one. As we're going to be talking about the seminars. Seminar number one. Seminar number two, at 5 p.m. EDT, will run for two hours. Uh, we always have the maps and campaign of Anna Meyer. Anna, what's it going to be about? What are you going to talk about? It will be more campaign and less maps than usual. And I thought that will okay. be kind of a convenient cool. since the, the game will be on Sunday. So, so I will talk a little bit about the rule sets and the ideas around that for my campaign. Of course, that will be, be uh, maps Guild War too, but <clears throat> that will be a little bit less than maps than usual and a bit more lore and, and stuff from my own campaign where I deviate from the main story and also a little bit about my my take on running my campaign and, and ideas and how I structure my when I come up with these ideas for my games and stuff. And that ties into the mapping too, because that will be when you move in more closely, there's a new set of problems and limitations and possibilities. So I will talk about that too. So so there will be some in principle of, of mapping something when you start getting into the nitty bitty detail, details, what kind of problems and opportunities and stuff do you do you get into, so to speak? So, so they will be uh, cart Greyhawk cartography from some new angles that we haven't seen that before, so to speak. That that will come to. I gotta see. I don't even remember when uh, Rick uh, Rick's uh, um, chat yeah. is. Uh, I want to make sure I don't tell it, say the wrong night. Okay, it's Friday night. Okay, all right. So, um, 
I know, um, I'm looking forward to that. And his seminars are always great. Late night here, I, I believe it's like 11 o'clock. Um, Rick Miller will, on his Discord is having just a Greyhawk chat. Um, and that's here, late night Greyhawk discussion seminar. Oh, he'll bring up some things. That's fun. Friday yeah. night uh, at 11 o'clock. You don't run any yeah. late night chats. You did that at another convention. Yeah, I did it. I did it during Gary Khan in 2021. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Gary Khan virtual. Yep. I did it every night. My God, I was so exhausted each night, if you remember. <laughs> yeah. I was so burnt after that. the end of that. I won't be doing that again. Day two. Day two. Tim kicks it off in the morning. Then uh, Chuck Combo is running Jim Ward's Tomb of Doom which is going to be awesome. And we have Blue Boxes game. Um, during that, we're going to have uh, this next seminar, which I'm going to be part of, Stephen Chenault hosting Aired, Greyhawk, and Altamira. So right, he's going to talk about Aired. I'm going to talk about Greyhawk and merge, Altamira merging in and what we got going on there. That will be uh, – that's the one that, if you're free, I'll have mm -hmm. you hop in on that too. Maybe sure. if you have a couple yep. map picks too, you yep. can add mm -hmm. that in. And that is at 4 o'clock. So that is, the, that is another seminar. Uh, Grand Joust, and we'll talk about that uh, shortly. And then, uh, and then Jimmy Duffy finishes up day two, day three. Robert kicks it off in the morning. Okay, you got a couple signups for this still. There's a couple slots. 7 a.m. EDT. Adam Myers, first time running a game live stream. 11 a.m. EDT. Yep. Uh, we also have uh, <laughs> Guild Superior. They should he should be hopping on shortly if he can make it. He'll be on. Awesome. And then yep. let's talk this. Greyhawk asked the experts. It's been usually the largest event of the stream. It's the finale. All those guests that are in there, you can ask them anything. Within reason. Not, when's Watsy going to do Greyhawk content? Because none of them want to answer that question. Okay? But we want to talk about, like, you know, have specific questions for them. Um, they've all confirmed. Eric Mona, Paizo director. Malden, Dennis Tetro. Great, great guest. Uh, Grok Rodner, Joe Block, Eric Boyd, the father of the specialty priest, and uh, the grow dog himself, Alan Groey, all have confirmed for this uh, Ask the Experts fun. this year. Awesome. It's going to be a fun, and that'll finish it off 7 p.m. EDT. And I'll be doing a ton of giveaways. We'll have giveaways the entire con. Chuck from Troller Games will be getting with all of you who have highlighted streams. You'll have at least two giveaways each stream from Troller Games. Combine that with all the giveaways I'll be doing for 3D print companies, Infinite Dimension Games, and Gamescape 3D, and also these at least three of these great maps. I'll be giving one of these away during the joust, okay? Uh, from Kafir at Cave Geek Art, as he is sponsoring as well, um, of the Greyhawk map that he did for last year's fundraiser. Robert actually has the real copy of. They're awesome. So, um... It's all good. You know, that's the thing. We always want to learn. We want to share information. Uh, that's the fun of doing a con together and, uh, you know, just having the community um, uh, pop up. So before I go over and talk a little bit more about the Joust, any of you uh, uh, guests want to talk about anything else or have any questions or mention, please go ahead there, John. Yeah, I'm um, sorry. I have to dash off to. No, I know you have. Yeah. Before I go, um, could I just uh, surrounded by so many senpai here um, and amazing, amazing people. Um, is there one thing that you would say is um, different running a con game compared to a different kind of one shot? So I've done plenty of one shots, but this is my first con game. Yes, you got. You got to be aware of your time. Great question. I want to hear that. Too. You have to be aware of your time. Now, the good thing is, is you're on your own channel. If this was on, like, if this was on the Gary Khan channel, you got to get off when at that time frame because there's another stream with a key coming on. So it's a good practice. And if you're at a con in person. Someone's taking that table from you. You have to be aware that, oh my gosh, I can't run this encounter because I just don't have the time. You know, it's, it's, it's a, you want to start on time uh, and, uh, and, and get right into it, you know, and that's just my suggestion. Anyone else want to handle uh, that question from John? I agree. I just echo that knowing that players, you know, they want to, they want to eat and have their lunch break and whatever. And in between the slots too. So a lot of people are doing back to back stuff. You just got to be very aware of, you know, when you need to, to end the slot. And if you need to drop out a encounter in the middle, you just need to be aware of that based on the time. John, you can run like 15 minutes late. No problem. Cause you're on your own channel, but you know, to get the courtesy of getting that raid into bipolar is awesome. And that just builds, builds, builds the audience. I know you're starting off. So you have no one raiding into you, unfortunately. Uh, are you going live shortly? I am. Well, we'll be, <laughs> we'll be rating. So, so, we'll yeah. be rating. 
We'll be reading it to you, John. So there you Thank go. Thank you so much. No Thank problem. You. Yes, we're doing Hunger of Ithrin today, which is our evil campaign, doing the last couple of chapters of Frostmaiden down beneath the Regged Glacier. And um, looking for lost Netherese goodies down there. Well, that's so, awesome. Yes, sorry to sorry to dash through so quickly. No, 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 no problem. And I really appreciate you coming on. I mean, I know you got so much going on. It's, it's uh, what time is it there? It is nine thirty a.m. Yeah, so <laughs> goblins, go, goblins are off to school on <laughs> Monday. Time for adventures. <laughs> yep. John, we'll see you in a little bit then. Thank you so very much. Yep. It's indeed fun to warm up those dice. <laughs> Have a good one. I'll talk to you soon. Word. Bye. Bye. So, um. That's a good question. And a lot of people, yeah. like, um, I, I learned that the hard way, and I know Tim has, too. It's tough. It's tough to get your mind around that, and uh, and uh, especially with you all, like, running. Uh, you've run so many. Uh, um, uh, Robert, this is, this is your first couple as well for you, too, correct? What, as far as? A highlighted stream at a con. Oh, yeah, highlighted stream. No, this is this is my, uh, this will be my first. Good. Very cool. You'll have fun with it. Oh, yeah. What do, here's a general question to all of you. What do you do if those seats don't get filled that you have? I mean, uh, uh, you all have like one opening, Jay and Ron. Is that okay on those games? Yeah. Yeah, oh, abs absolutely. Yeah, we can run with as few as three and as many as six online. Okay. So we prefer tables four to six, but, you know, that usually works out the best in terms of not having to adjust the challenges too much in the adventure because when we write we're writing for a, a variety of ap uh, average party levels so basically you know an adventure will be a tier one a tier two or a tier three but you have to write that adventure that tier three adventure has to be able to be adapted for characters of average party level 11 through average party level 16. so you end up with a lot of different uh you know stat blocks sometimes different monsters and the challenges and stuff like that it's um, it's good to hear. Uh, you know, I have uh, um, yeah, no problem. Uh, it's all good, fandom. No, not a problem. I, 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 it's good to see. Um, there are things that uh, you know, I, I've uh, always like you. I always assume when I'm in a con in person, someone is not going to make it to the table, and if they make it, if everyone makes it, that's great. But I always assume. What contingency plan do I have if one or two people don't show up? How do I run this? Uh, sometimes I'll let them double up characters or I'll just NPC one or two of the characters, but you know, you got to do that because things happen in life, you know? So, um, absolutely. And what, one of the things you can do to get around that is you can kind of tier it, you know, so you average, you figure out how many, you know, it, for combats, especially, they can get unwieldy if only three people show up and you're expecting six. You know, or the face of the party doesn't show up and you have a lot of social encounters in the adventure. Um, yeah, it can be a real, it can be a real challenge. The combats are easier to adapt because you can always reduce the number of critters you're throwing at people. But, uh, you know, uh, the, if you don't have the right blend of classes or, you know, skills for a social encounter, it can be a real challenge. And inevitably, the cleric doesn't show. So, <laughs> as, a, so as, a G, as a GM, fortunately, in 5e, you have the, the short rest mechanic. And then, like, just don't don't beat up a party. Granted, it's a, it's a con game. But for our, you know, being an organized play games, you, you don't want to TPK players. Um, that's no fun for anybody. And then you, there's a lot more, you know, cast the herd after the fact. But... Yeah, give them give them healing. Throw a couple extra potions in. Just, just. I mean, your job as a GM is that is you're an entertainer. Make sure make sure your players have a good time because they, especially with us, they are our customers. Yeah. What were you gonna say, Tim? Got to run, my friend. Tim. Everyone, I'll see you this Thanks, weekend. Duncan. Yep. Good Next job, weekend. Sleep. Take care, Sir That's Duncan. Yes, it, it, it's kind of interesting with the the two adventures Sometimes. that I'm running because uh, Shadow Over Green Sky can be run with as few as three, which is what I have right now. Um, you know, probably me a little tweaking. And if worst comes to worst, I can just always throw uh, you know control an NPC that goes along with the party to give them a hand. White Blue Mountain presents challenges because yeah. one, I'm converting it 
from 1E to CNC. And even in 1E, the, the list goes in almost not, not so much even levels because it's party levels five through 10 with like yeah, I know, uh, anywhere. It's a little crazy. I mean, it, it, it's like ridiculous. It's almost like they're expecting you to be like dragging along lower level player uh, characters with you because uh, they, they go and then they give a range. It's like, well, the total party should be somewhere between 40, you know, 40 and 60 part, uh, levels total in a party. It's like, Okay, so I'm creating five level nine NP, uh, five, five level nine pregens for them, and if one of them doesn't show up, that's you know, how, what impact is that going to have? Um, thankfully, I'm very confident in four out of the five. The, the fifth person, just because I have not uh, yet heard from them. Okay, well, that's good. To, it's good to hear, uh, Robert, that um, you know you are moving along. Keep that's another thing, communication. Keep at it. Uh, I, I'm I'm lucky because all of my signups are people I know on Discord. So boom, 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 boom. Got to do Discord. Got all the characters set up. I mean, I have 18 characters. That's only 18. So uh, not a big deal. Who are some of those 18 characters? You ready? The return of, this time played by William Henry Dvorak. Our friendly neighborhood Black Knight will be back at the joust. Oh. The Black Knight will be back. We play by Giant Stop William Henry Dvorak this time. And we have to give him some some advice about number of helmets to wear. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Mike Disney playing a spoiler and a former champion, of course, Sir Vargrin the Unmerciful. Oh, a yeah. a, uh, a sidekick of Lord Page himself at a high port. All right. Can't so, wait. Some big names. The son of Melf or Smelf or real name Eliador, played by Luke Gygax. Luke will be in the joust. Okay. Luke is looking forward to it. Alyssa Faden re reprising Katarina von Kessel, her paladin, whose only goal is to unhorse the son of Melf. Yeah. I'll we, give you a hint. They play they, they joust each other in the first round. Oh geez, I wonder how I set that up. <laughs> yeah. So that'll be fun. Some other people. Um, let me see here. Chuck Combo, Josh Death Dealer will return. Hopefully sober this time. Um, Lady Israel, this time played by uh, by Little Bones, is playing Lady Israel this time. Um, and some other individuals that you know. Uh, Juan Carlos, Captain of the Guard, played by Kane Ancient Gamer. Patrick um, Smelf, yes, son of Melf. You got it. Uh, his name's Eliador, but I like calling him Smelf just because uh, Melf is male elf. You get it. All mm -hmm. of wow, uh, yeah, all of the uh, uh, PCs. Um, Alan's character, Alan's not playing, so you got Sir Reginald, you got Lorik the Wolf, Arian, and Holden. All losers last uh, time we played, they're all back. Um, and uh, a couple others, uh, Lady Finean, who's a high seed from uh, Celine, uh, played by Chantel. So we got a whole crew, and there's 18 in here, and I'm really looking forward to doing it and running it. And uh, rules are you just set, uh, before you roll, you set a, and it's based on chain mail, you set a point of, and here it is. This one's like Dragon 17, but I've modified them. These are my modified rules that I utilize. You set a point of attack on your shield, or, or you go right here, and it tells you, Set one of seven attack points on your shield or helm. And then there's six defensive positions along here. You preset them, put it on a index card, show it up on the screen, roll your 20-sided die. I cross-reference. And uh, you see when you see if you get unhorsed, you get a saving throws or specification. And there's a point system, three passes if no one gets unhorsed. It'll be fun. Yes, he was robbed by Titan Dice last time. Lork will return with his helm there, Troy. Absolutely. So, uh, yep. Uh, um, and this time Bill's playing them. So, but it'll be a fun time. Looking forward to it. Uh, who's running the betting squares? Oh, someone needs to run them, Tino. Uh, um, Tino is playing. Uh, who the heck are you playing, dude? Uh, my God. Oh, you're playing Tarish Ming. Uh, Tino, you want the good news or bad news? Uh oh. <laughs> Tino, the good news is. Or bad news, your character's ranked 16th out of 16. 
Uh, the good news is that you're fighting Sir Reginald, who lost his number one seed last time and lost to a 16th seed, so you maybe have a chance. So there you go. Uh, yeah, so he's a red shirter. So uh, looking forward to this. Uh, I think we'll have a real fun time, especially with Luke involved. Really nice of Luke to come in and play. Um, Luke's such a great guy and really has, uh, you know, really. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 Ron, I made some changes to him to make it more interactive and all. And people are, you know, going at each other and stuff. And the, the two previous champions cannot win, but they are spoilers, and you will find out about that. Von Moku's character and Michael's character. Because they have some bragging rights, too, and they're big, pompous SOBs. So they're there to make everyone else's life miserable. Right? So... So I know we're running, we're getting close to time here. I know some people haven't signed in. I, Steven is in the ether somewhere. Um, Chuck's, uh, at, um, it sounds like someone knocked over a telephone pole in his neighborhood. Uh -oh. He's been texting me and he's out of power. If it can happen to Chuck, it will happen to Chuck. Yep, yep. You know? Matthew is unseated, Von Mokel, because you can't win. You are, you are special. You and you, you're not seated. You and uh, um, so Vargreen are special. You'll see. Sit back and relax and enjoy it. Enjoy the pain you're going to cause on people. Yep. So uh, any uh, anything you anyone wants to say about the con or uh, reach uh, shout out uh, while we're here, and then we'll start doing some giveaways. Um, I am. I, I am. It's, it's going to be fun, uh, Curse. I can't wait. Uh, plus mm -hmm. with uh, with Tim. So uh, Jay, uh, Ron, what would you like to? talk about you want to talk about your uh, organization at all or anything uh you'd like to shout out that would be awesome yeah just so we're working under the umbrella of warduke press um we did set up a discord server under warduke thanks to ron oh great um, yeah so we have our own so obviously we're running games on the the uh great virtual greyhawk con Hawktoberfest server uh for this weekend but we do run a lot of pickup games and things like that on awesome. the weekends and some weeknights, uh, we have a virtual game sign up. So if you are, uh, you know, on Discord and in the neighborhood and want to check us out and maybe step in, you know, sign up for a game, um, you know, we do offer them semi regularly. So, and we'll run, uh, you know, we'll run some low level games, uh, pick up games uh, through that through that server. Cool. Anything you want to add, Ron? I mean, it's a it's a it's a good group. I think you're getting the the best GMs. I mean, I'm, I'm a little biased, but because because they're author run adventures, they're authored, and the author, hey, there's there's Josh, there's hey, in, in the South Middle hey, Square. Um, <laughs> well, you so can yeah, move these where you want. Because they're because they're author run. Oh, authors. we have a and look at Chuck. this, oh, Stephen Chanel. Hey. Nice. Awesome. Way better than me. <laughs> <laughs> Way better than Josh. Steven, good to see you. Hey, how's it going, everybody? I know you were driving from uh, some uh, from the farm? Yeah, from Harrison down, flying like a monkey. But, yeah. Hey, dude, I really appreciate it. We're just uh, we're doing some quickie shout-outs here, and then we'll get you and Josh involved in the discussion. So I'll go, I'm sorry, Jay. Yeah. Hey, Ron, uh, go ahead. Yeah. Awesome. How is it? We, we, one more. We've got a complete Hollywood Squares here. Who's who's in the either? Yeah, we need Paul. I want to be in the center then, and I want to be because one of my the guys Charles that Nelson played, Riley, right? No, the Paul the, Lynn. the guy that used to yeah Paul Lynn from Bewitched, right? He uh, yeah he's one of my one of the guys I put my regular Saturday night game. Uh, his entire character is based on that that uh, the Paul Lynn from Bewitched character. He's he plays a warlock. It's hilarious. Oh, that that's great. Yeah, yeah. he was. Uh, Uncle Arthur was that yep. his name? Yeah, yeah, yep. that's it. But if you really want to know, um, Josh's character in my Slob Squad Squad is based on Carl Spackler from Caddyshack. Yes, <laughs> yes, because yes, I know. Carl Spackler Leaf, a Druid Ranger. It's so no enough. problem. Yeah, exactly. So Josh, thanks. So Josh is the tech behind all the stuff, and we uh, we had bipolar on earlier talking about oh, the. Great. We're talking about gray space and uh, and what he's going to be doing. So I just gray um, space and uh, all the technical things I can't do on the on the server. Josh takes care great of. Ryan. <coughs> also, Balfour and Great Bay tend to be our tech people, uh, holding holding up. Um, uh, you know, Trevor when, and Trevor too. When we holding up the con, uh, you know, when people uh, for questions and all on the server. So we really appreciate that. Uh, we're really looking forward to uh, some things here, Stephen. Hello. Great to see you. 
Yeah, good to see you guys. I know you're running, and let's. I'm going to go back to this real quick while we got uh, legendary Stephen Shinola on. Uh, you heard Chuck has no power in his house, right? Does he know? <laughs> it's so, uh, someone hit a pole in this neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, if it can so happen I'm, to someone, it does yeah. to Chuck. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's Chuck, without a doubt. Oh, my gosh, man. So uh, let me roll back uh, to the two events you're doing here real quick. Give me one second, please. Let me get them up here. Because uh, one of them, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be on your channel. So let me go here. Yep. All right. So you have, Stephen, you have 2 p.m. This is Eastern, so 1 p.m. Central, your time. You're running full on Ramparts to Moat House on Friday. Yes. And I'm actually going to start. I'm going to, you know, what is it, a three hour slot, I think? Yeah. Uh, is that, is that what yes, it's so three hours time? going into Anna. Yep. Three hours. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm going to skip Hamlet itself and just jump right into the Moat House. We, we might do a little Hamlet stuff, but, uh, you know, you can get into it. It's so much role-playing in Hamlet that that could go on forever in a day. So I think I'm going to get them started and get them into the mode house. And once again, we had a time question for Venixi Walkie. How do you – and Steven just judged three hours. I got to do it this way, which is which is smart. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because you, you, you always got to count in, you know, players are going to do, <laughs> do all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you got to factor in, you know, a good chunk of time for them to do to do whatever it is. And I know that you never know uh, in an event like this who's going to be sitting on the other side of the screen. And if you've got even one person that really gets into role playing a lot, and there almost invariably is one person that does. <laughs> and, you know, in Hamlet, there's what I don't know, sixty developed NPCs. So <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a lot. I'm going to go talk to Otis for three hours about uh, trees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It could happen, or the druid, or whatever. You know, you're absolutely correct. So you yeah, can say they talk about trees. Yeah, you seem to say, "Well, you just left. Great, you just left Hamlet, so you know." <laughs> and it's time. Thanks very much for coming. <laughs> you know, one of the things I do at conventions all the time to to get to move past that is I will have them exiting the dungeon that they just victoriously plundered, and they have three or four thousand gold pieces, and now they got to get it back to town. <laughs> so it becomes this overland adventure. You know, where there's no there's no interruption. It's <laughs> it's getting home again. <laughs> it's like uh, the treasure of Sierra Madre or something like that. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So on... that hopefully the the party doesn't end over it. <laughs> well, you know what's funny about it? I would say it's almost universally split half and half between these because there's always a river crossing that they got to get a big chest of gold across, which is not easy to do. And I would say it splits almost half and half every time I do that. Half want to abandon the gold. And half will do anything possible <laughs> to keep that gold in their yeah. pockets. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's me, man. You, I got it. You got to get it. Get it back home. That's, that's, that's right. why the wizard always has floating disc. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh no, 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 not not in Stevens, because I remember what Grape Ape did. Uh, Matt did yeah. with that oh, yeah. with people with that freaking. I was like, you can't do that. It's not meant that way. He's like, oh, why not? He's so we first came on here. He's talking about the joust. He's talking about targeting the, the other person's horse. He's talking about cutting straps. I'm like, you're not doing any of that. You're not doing any of that in the joust. No, it's, you're not. No. So he's already, Matt's already trying to, yeah, uh, pretty fun. Yeah, it's, they will push. Now I let Great Bait push way too much in that game. Yeah. Never, never again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it stuck in my mind that exactly. Um, oh, yeah. Saturday, I don't even know, like you and I haven't even collaborated on this, but we're going to have to. Aired Greyhawk in Altamira at uh, 3 p.m. your time, 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, it's a two-hour slot. Uh, actually, an hour and a half, hour 45 as we get for, as I get ready to set the joust up from there. So I'll be down in my basement doing this. Um, so, Stephen, what are we going to talk about? Are we going to talk about uh, how we're crossing over everything? Yeah, I th I mean, I, I, you know, I'm super excited about this project. I think this is really, really cool. I love awesome. city-states. Uh, I don't do a huge number of city adventures, primarily because there's so many – it's like Hamlet when – Characters go into cities, they meet so many NPCs so quickly that it's difficult to run it from the fly, yeah. right? But something like Altamira will be fully developed. Yep. So no matter what they got, no matter where they go, they're in. So that's the first thing. And then, you know, I, we can go over that forever and a day and then dive into the specifics of Aired and merging Greyhawk. Yes. As you all know, I'm a huge Greyhawk fan. Uh, and Aired, Aired and Greyhawk are pretty, you know, 
It's a lot of influences. And Anna will be joining us for that too. So uh, more than likely. So it'll be three of us. It'll be on, it'll be on Troller Games' channel. And uh, yeah. we'll have a nice discussion there. And then we'll roll yeah. into from that, uh, you know, I'll have to jump out. Maybe you and Anna can talk for 15. Why well, I, I, I'm prepping up the the joust because uh, that we go right into that. So I got a little. Yeah, we have always around. some cool maps, and I've seen some cool stuff on Facebook recently. We can talk about that if that yeah. Works. So, yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you, it's funny. So uh, someone got on our Discord. Not many people know, but Aired is Venus a billion years ago, right? So it's the actual planet, and it, and it ties into our amazing adventures mind and all that crap. So someone got in there and started doing miles and, and mapping everything out. And then my son, who's huge into astronomy, took the took Blender, I think that's the software, and he began mapping. He took the map of the world of Aired and put it in, in Venus. I don't know what the hell he did. But he merged all this stuff together, and he noticed I was about 6,000 miles short in the mapping. So he made this huge ocean, shifted things a little bit here and there and that's what you're seeing the beginning of that map and that's when i tagged you in that post anna because i was thinking this would be his map needs all of those terrain yep. pieces mm -hmm. it, it would just be beautiful absolutely <clears throat> so now you have lots of more real estate you need to to populate with <laughs> cool stuff so yep yeah. Yeah. a giant ocean that uh, which is nice about that too because people can take their homebrew stuff and drop it right in the ocean and you're mm -hmm. you're good to go yeah, you should have a couple of slots. Like you have this much room here that you can put whatever you want up to this size will want. fit in and stuff. So yeah. Giant ocean. Did you hear that, Troy? One of the one of the viewers is a, a, a yes, mariner, yeah, cannibal. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. A man who uh, has some some ocean stuff coming out too. Uh, one oh, of the nice. adventures that uh, we're running is a Qualish one that he wrote that. Uh, yeah, I've actually had to pare down too, because um, as you were talking about earlier, the um, there's just <laughs> it's not, not gonna be enough time. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the problem with the slots, uh, and you don't ever want to stop people from role playing because some people love that stuff and they yeah. get into it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Cool. But then you run out of. It's, uh, it's a nice thing too when I do. I normally do uh, overland adventures, and I do overland adventures so when people eat up time. I can just cut, you know, 80 miles of country out and just move, move the conclusion near the, the end of the time block. And, no one ever knows. and you arrive. Congratulations. Good job. <laughs> you, you've succeeded. Yes. But you can't do that in dungeon so much. It's a little bit more difficult. Yeah. <laughs> but we didn't fight, fit, fit, fight the bad guy. Yeah. Well, right. um... especially something like the moat house that everybody's been in 14 times to begin with. <laughs> they have expectations. Yes. Yeah. So, Stephen, I've already gotten with Chuck, and uh, you know, Troller Games is a major sponsor of the con. We're all set with, uh, with uh, for the most part, what we're doing with giveaways and all. And we really appreciate your support. Um, yeah. You know, it's going to be a, it's going to be a great, it's going to be a great event. Uh, you know, we got some really, the sponsors have really stepped up again. So there'll be lots of goodies for everyone, including you know, we got four giveaways tonight um, um, for for some things uh, going on here. Uh, um, what really, giveaways? What's that? Two of them are STL sets. Uh, one is a uh, Mike Disney print tonight, right? We're going to give away a, a Mike Disney print. And I'm also going to give away only, uh, unfortunately, I have large, small, and medium, but I'm going to give away a Virtual Crowd Con 3 shirt with, as you can see, the Bone Hill, uh, Ode to Bone Hill, Rediscover Secrets and Legends. Yeah, we can see it better on uh, Phantom over there and Rob. Yeah, Rob's got his on already. already, yes. So uh, I'm going to give one of those away to someone lucky tonight, too. And uh, I know, uh, I know, uh, um, Patrick, you ordered one. It'll go out tomorrow. Uh, I saw that as well. Oh, does anyone know Ed Falber? It, it, please let me know. I, I've been trying to reach him via email. Uh, he ordered a shirt, and I don't have his address, uh, and he signed up, but I can't get him to respond to my emails, so I can't send him the, the shirt I have that he ordered. So if anyone knows, uh, um, maybe I'll signed I'll up to that. anyone's games. I, I didn't look. I guess that would be. Yeah, smart. I'll be right back. I'll, 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 <laughs> check, I'll check that out. So, um, yeah, he may know him too. So, um, uh, anything else, uh, Mike uh, or, or uh, Gregory Bourne? Thanks, guys. It was, you know, thank you so very much for coming on too. I know we're 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 over time here, and uh, um, but uh, really appreciate your participation there. You got you know, without you got six. You know, you guys are one quarter of all events. Correct, reborn. It's really impressive. 
Uh, well, we're happy to participate and thank you for organizing this. This is and they're going to be a Gary Con too. Yes, they're looking to be Gary Con in person, even. Uh, yeah, well, in person. you can try. Yeah. Stephen will be there in person. I'm assuming this, next year too. Correct, Stephen? Yes, I will. Absolutely. Anyone Absolutely. going to Game Hall? I am not. I don't think there'll be any trolls. You going? I'm going. Uh, yeah. I it's looks like I'm busy only... October. It's, it's gonna be a busy October. Yeah, it looks like I'm the only one going to PAX Unplugged. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, right, it's right in my back door, you know, right there. That's okay. It'll be fun. Isn't Lentiquitous going to that? Well, yeah, yeah. I was talking about uh, on the screen here. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I know. Uh, Alan, I Alex Alex goes. Mitch, Zombie Mitch goes. But a lot of the streamers who went last year, I don't think Stella's going this year. Um, are not going. So, um, uh, you know, so. Just leave me alone in the game hold Discord. You'll be fine. A little bit. This, I, I, yeah. yeah, Rob's I mean, going. Rob Phantom's going. That's right. Yeah. So, all right. Um, let's, uh, real quick. Uh, Annie, you got anything you want to shout out? Uh, on tomorrow, uh, great cast. Uh, they did a Wiley Hobbit and, and Matthias did an interview with me a couple of weeks ago. It's coming out tomorrow. Great cast. So where you go and find your podcasts and, and there will be an episode when we talk about Meyerhawk maps and, and a bunch of other stuff and awesome. a little bit more of coming up for the <coughs> convention as well. Very cool. I'll talk about what's going on uh, next week coming up to, uh, to the con as well, what, what events we have. Always some fun things. Um, Mike, what's going on? You got anything you want to shout out? Uh, just uh, make sure that everybody tunes in. <coughs> it's coming up weekend um, at noon on the channel, so we can have this uh, virtual Greyhawk con get off to a really, really good start. So. Plus watch Sir Vargra and the Unmerciful be completely unmerciful during the That's joust. right. That's right. Yeah. I know he wants some revenge on what happened to him last time. You better believe it. So, um, Steve, anything else you'd like to shout out? Uh, I know you got a Kickstarter going. I got it in your sh I got it programmed in your shout out. Why don't you want to talk about that? Uh, yeah, we're running a Kickstarter now called uh, Codex Sinarum. It's part of our Mythos it's series. Here. Yep. It's the seventh uh, book in this series, and it basically explores the myths of ancient China and the cosmology of the ancient Chinese. A lot of fun. It's doing really well. So head over and check that out. And I'm looking forward to the Greyhawk Con this weekend. It's going to be a blast. Yep. 255 mm -hmm. backers in it already, which is great. I think I was one of the – I think it was number 80, so I got into the first 100 there for, oh, nice. for that. Yeah, absolutely. So um, awesome. Your hu husband and you backed it. That's great to hear, Mystical. Um, I really appreciate that. Um uh, so um, this is what's going on real quick during uh, this week. Um, Wednesday night, Wednesday night, myself, Anna, and, uh, and Greyhawk Mike Bridges, Politics and Greyhawk, Legends of Lore, episode 170. Anna's like, we did we did the economy in Greyhawk. That went well. So let's do something nebulous and see what happens. I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it was, we, we did economy and, and Jay and the other ones – said that no we that will be boring and it turned out to be a good episode i have some good questions and some good angles and stuff that i think we can get some good discussion on this that'll kick off the week wednesday night yep. at uh eight o'clock exactly PM what could go wrong what yeah. could go wrong uh <laughs> next Everything. so i have um back to school night on thursday and so does bill but i have all this if you know if you saw i have this unbelievable terrain up from the ruins of Strand Keep Castle from the Gord novels up on my on my on my counter uh, my table now, and I gotta tear this all down. And I'm like, if I don't, if I do don't tear this, you know, I gotta set, reset it all back up next week. So like, we're gonna run, we're running this. We're starting an hour late. Thursday night's game will start at eight thirty Eastern instead of seven thirty because we're gonna try and get this done. Because I gotta put the entire joust and I gotta put the free city of Altamira back on the table. So I know where, right? Where's me? But um, so so you know that yeah, because <laughs> it's gonna take four hours to do that, Stephen. You understand? That's four hours of my life I can't get back and put it back. Yeah, it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we're we're playing Thursday night, the night before Groucon starts. Um, and uh, and Bill Bill did like thirty new paint jobs of these Orogs and Orcs, and they're unbelievable. So we're going to uh, we're going to continue. Um, with Adventure 972 Shock Troops, Portrait Works, another um, 
you'll get another access. Someone will get access to their program. You know, I use it. Uh, I use it. It's fantastic. That'll be the giveaway on Thursday night. Here's uh, in the events I'm running. The Grail campaign and maps of Anna B. Meyer Friday, 5 p.m. Um, you know, uh, and that is uh, Stephen. Stephen will be raiding into that from his seminar uh, troller games uh, uh, from his uh, game. He's DMing. That's Friday. Um, Saturday morning, the reverse dungeon of the from Mysterious Tim. Okay. The Grand Jousts of Altamira. That's the seminar we'll be rating into this. Uh, Luke Gygax is playing in it. Ellis Faden, Mike Disney, Bone, Little Bones, Chuck Cumbo, Josh Death Dealer again. Uh, William yes. Henry Dvorak and all the whole crew will be uh, will be there for a wonderful, hopefully, event. I have five hours to, uh, to get it done. Tell uh, Chuck and, you better do my namesake proud. Yes. Well, remember he def- he knocked he knocked the number one seed out last year. Mm-hmm. So, but he's not he's not seated 16th this year because he went up. Who's level. Luke playing? Luke is playing Smelf, the son of Melf. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I already said the only one I give you is Alyssa Faden's character, who her only goal is to unhorse him. It, they they're eight nine seeds, so they're going against each other in the first round. Oh, Alyssa and Luke. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'm, Anyone I'm, got any bets? Anyone no bets have been bet? out there yet, but you know, normally bets get to get during it. It's really a fun thing. Everyone gets really involved in it. People are bad mouthing and trashing each other. It's wonderful. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, Jay, thanks a lot. I know you got to go. Thank you so very much for your participation. See you, Jay. Appreciate it, Jay. Yeah. Have a good one, man. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Yes. See you soon. The, one of the 12 yeah, Jays in my life. Yep. <laughs> uh, and then, um, the, the the grand finale Sunday night the Grail Gas the experts Eric Mona Eric Boyd Alan Grow Joe Block and Malden what a crew Fred you can ask him anything you want all right except when is Watsy going to start running Grail content because no I don't personally if you knew you were not allowed to say <laughs> yeah exactly so that's the one question you can't ask <laughs> yep. but that'll let that'll troll or do it let troll or do it <laughs> I'll do it. Yeah. Well, we are. We are allowed to. We're Altamira will be placing Greyhawk in an addendum. We got that all worked out. Uh, we got the right from the horse's mouth. Altamira, we, that's yeah, in uh, guys, Celine, right? Riding, stop. So it's very good. It's not in Celine. So stop. <laughs> stop. It's not in Celine. <laughs> two weeks after, uh, two things. Saturday morning, October eighth, ten a.m. EDT. As special legends and lore. Creighton Broadhurst and the on-wall guys from the UK will be on on a special Legends and Lore because there's an, such an hour difference. We're going to run it Saturday morning. We'll have all that. Finally, have Creighton Broadhurst on a, a show. Have never had him on before. October eighth, okay, the week after. L- lastly, Mike, you love this. Prophecies of the Overgord. Oh yeah, our Saturday night special, the Slav Squat Squad, all women. And Josh. <laughs> it's an all women cast then. Um, yes, we have some new terrain coming, and the Overgord are going to go in through a little Halloween special. AJ of Winner's Tales is going to be the special guest. Thanks. Okay, and that'll be the group for, yes. Um, who's who's playing the Overgord? Who? Me. <laughs> of course. And all that comes. I, with I think Mike's work. saying he wants the job. He wants to. <laughs> oh, no, I got it. I got it. Come on. You know. You know. I'll mind game the hell out of them. That, that's going to be a monster. A monster stream too. They're they're all fun. Uh, a lot. And AJ, it's her first time playing a one e two e. She's never played before, so it'd be good too. It's all women in a group, with the exception of Josh, and he's an honorary woman there, orchid. So yeah, that's what they keep telling me, and I'm like, no, I'm not. A, I'm not. I don't need to be not. I just. I'm me. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. So and that'll be that'll be what's going on uh, there. Um, so uh, yeah, fun stuff. And then I got something going on with Steve. Uh, um, sorry, with Ed Greenwood coming up at the end of the month. We'll worry about that after all we get through all this. So let's do the giveaways, and then we'll uh, we'll, uh, we'll 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 raid into Phoenixy, um, who's on. Who's uh, since no one can raid into him at the beginning of the con, we'll raid into him tonight. How's that sound? All right, we'll do the final call for all the signups. You gotta roll. You gotta yeah, roll. I'm gonna jump out here. Uh, we got We're gonna meet sometime Thursday morning, right? Sounds good. All right. Yeah. Yep. We'll, we'll talk uh, in we'll Skype. We'll talk on Skype about it, and we'll get. Uh, yep. we'll, we'll, we'll let you know everything that's going on. So. When's that Kickstarter yep. close? See you soon. Yep. Uh, I think we still got about 20 days, so we're we're golden on that. Oh, okay. It's already. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Stephen, thanks, thanks for hopping on, man. I know you're busy, so thank you so very much. We'll see you later.
Continue. Good night. So let's do let's do the giveaway. That was oh, I'm glad I was able to hop on. That was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, last call. Exclamation point! Drawing four giveaways. You need to tell me what you want. Do you want the Mike Disney? Do you want the Mike Disney print? Do you want the Graucon shirt? Do you want? And I'm gonna throw these up. Um, sh- I got I got to put them up. Do you want the Gamescape 3D New Terrain setup STL, which is uh, my, my is freaking awesome? Uh, here we go. Let me throw that up on the screen. I'll block my face. As long as I don't crash things. Or there you go. That's part of it. Um, along with the witch's hut and a bunch of other buildings he's doing, and it'll be two months. Okay. Or do you want the last hearth, hearth kitchens from um, Infinite Dimension Games? Right. Sockamore, thank you for the giveaway. I mean, thank you for the follow. All right, here we go. Gonna close it out. And, um, and by the way, uh, they're both sponsors of GrailCon. They're gonna they're each giving away a ton of STL files for. For Graucon. Really awesome, awesome companies. All right, let me did you get the image resized yet? Yeah, I sent it over to you. for, for, yeah. for, for Yeah, I did. For uh, Cave Geek, yeah. Oh, shoot. Why I know. You you're, you're a busy man. First winner, Forever Night. Are you on to claim Forever Night? You need to tell me which one oh, of the four things you want. That was a good show. Forever Night. Is the Forever Night on? Forever Night's on in chat. Just say what you want, Forever Night. There he is. is. For, does he have a 3D printer? He or she? 3D printer? Oh, yeah. He's got like 50 of them. <laughs> Forever. You really want the Gamescape 3D stuff if you don't have it, access to it. Trust me. All right. Um, uh, whisper me your email address and I will link the Dropbox to you. All right. Priority has it. If he's got nah, I doubt printers. it. I, uh, are, you, are you in their Patreon, Forever Night? Oh, there you go. Okay. See? See? Josh, you always think I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> you got him. All right, Forever. Next winner. Congrats, Forever. Next winner. Amy, how would we... How, yeah. That was a great show. What do you mean? It's about vampires. Yeah. So, you know. Eh. Tim Enoch Pratt. Oh. Oh, my gosh. Dave and Darling have been waiting. Sorry. Welcome. Darling. Yay. My apologies. I'm going to throw you both up top. I'll throw you both you up top. Put me in the middle. I want to be in the middle. I want uh, you want to be in the middle. Hey, everybody. I What's like going on over here? Awesome. We're doing the giveaways here. So uh, um, the night, that, that winner was um, Tim. What do you want? Enoch Pratt. Do you tell me. Is he on? Do yeah, anyone see Enoch? He's always on. He was just on it. There he is. You got the like Disney <laughs> print. Okay, you got it, Tim. <laughs> I know where you live. Well, I shouldn't have said it that way, but yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tim. <laughs> Before we do the final two, darling, tell us how excited you are to play in Anna's game. I am so excited to play in Anna's oh. game. You don't even know. I like specifically messaged Jay and was like, I just want to play in Anna's game. Just make make that happen for me, please. <laughs> And you can tell a little bit you because you go play a really cool character. I'm know? stoked. I'm stoked. Yeah, yeah he's going to be really was. cool. Yep. Thanks, Anna. I look oh, forward to it. Yep. It would be awesome to have you in the game. Yep. And Dave, you're running the, the last highlighted stream RPG of the con on Sunday. Uh, tell us a little bit about your game. Uh, Death in the Howling Hills taking place in the territory of the Wolf Nomads right around the time where Ayuz is making incursions uh, uh, over the Dulce River. And um, there's a group of adventurers, one of which is a phantom here is going to be playing in that game along Mm -hmm. with uh, Enoch and a couple other folks um, are going to be sent into the hills to... Well, I'm not going to give too much away because Phantom's right here. Put your earmuffs on, buddy. Um, (laughs) There we go. There's gonna be Sounds some. Awesome. There's gonna be some good surprises. I've twisted the the written uh, two page write up that's in Greyhawk Adventures. Um, I've twist? twisted a little bit. Yep. So it'll be fun. I'm really excited to run it. It's always a an honor to run a game in this uh, event. So thanks for the opportunity. Oh, Thank you so awesome. very much. Really appreciate you coming on, hopping on. You know, uh, both of you. So Frixer, uh, you were the third winner. Uh, we need Frixer to say what he want. He uh, what they, what they want. Um, and then we'll uh, and, um, let me know. It's either the T-shirt or the uh, 
Infinite Dimensions game 3D print last winner, fourth winner, is Curtis. Ooh, Ooh fix. I mean, congrats, Curtis. Uh, <laughs> Curtis, do you have anyone? Do you have anyone in your family who can fit into a small or medium or a large? You let me know. I'll, I'll send it all the way to, to San Francisco area. Curtis would look good in a large. So, oh. you, Curtis, let me know. Uh, small, medium, or large there. Um, you know, family-wise, I don't have any other sizes to give out because they've all gone right through them. Uh, Curtis is on, um, so that's good. All right? So, I need Fixer and Curtis to get in touch with me. So Feel I, better, Jeff. Uh, any, um, Dave, uh, darling, would you like to shout out what you guys are doing? Stream-wise or... or, or uh, Go ahead, Grave. Grave. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I'm about to, I'm just bouncing around today, man. It's been a crazy day for me. I've been like book solid. As soon as I get off here, I'm going to be popping right onto my own stream and I'll be painting tonight. Uh, since our Descent into Avernus game is all wrapped up now, every Sunday night I do uh, paint nights. And tonight's while painting, I'll be watching last week's Blade Runner episode that I've been in on Dave's channel, Guild Superior, which has been super, super fun. Very cool. 100%. Yeah. Are you playing a replicant? I or am. A... Yeah, of course I'm a replicant. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> are, we supposed, are we supposed to know that? Or is that? Yeah, 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 yeah. No. Do we need no. a void camp. <laughs> if, well, if, if this is far enough in the future it's 2037 i think where it's it, the the replicants aren't being hunted down like they're they're not being retired these are this is a different generation that's cool so it's a little yeah yeah yep. i'm There's, the blade runner now okay, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> wasn't that what he was supposed to be in the first place was he, he didn't know he was a replicant but he was a, and hunting the replicants yeah you know, know, creep uh, running with scissors doesn't count as making you a Blade Runner, right? <laughs> oh my God! See, I, I, that's the only reason I let I let Balfron on. Hi, Balfron. <laughs> hey. Where's your Where's your cam, dude? Yeah. Uh, you know, it's uh, hidden. Yeah, it's it's probably better oh, off. That's, that's funny. I thought that movie, was by him. The, yeah. <laughs> the hidden. Yeah. Yes. Oh, the hidden. Comic Laughlin. Yes. Wait, we agree on something. I like Kyle McLaughlin. Uh, now I hate myself. the movie. I'm gonna uh, go get the DVD and throw it away. <laughs> He's better in that than in Dune. Okay. Uh, no, I'm not uh, arguing with you. All I do is argue with you over dumb shit. I'm not doing that. I'm not arguing anymore over dumb stuff. So, <laughs> quit <laughs> jump into the Josh bait. <laughs> yes, your, exactly. Uh, New Year's resolution. Yep. So, what do you think, darling? You see the thing that Mike has in his background? I. I do. You're going to find out about it on the 15th. I, you know, I had this like little inkling of a suspicion after after I got the the image from you. Uh, what was that today or last night? And I was yeah. like, oh, I am so excited. Very you cute. all know I like a beholder. <laughs> <laughs> nice Halloween special on the 15th. It'll be the Slavs uh, will be a fun time. And, and AJ's real excited about it. She will be playing an Elven Ranger. Nice. Who is who's who's either a relative or friends with Utayame cosplays Ariawin from two adventures ago, the Archer. Remember when everyone was turned to stone mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. So she knows her, and that's the connection. In so yeah, always got to make that work. So. I have faith that one day you're going to say her name right. Utayame cosplay. Then I say it right. Utahime. Oh, that's right, Utahime. <laughs> it's, a nice, it's my shitty South Jersey accent. He's still so. saying it with his Jersey accent. Right? Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. It's still, still shitty, but and my and my, better. and my voice going. You know, it's still. I'm still feeling the feeling the effects of this bullshit of, of three weeks Jeez. of this stuff. Yeah, everybody's sick. Yeah, that COVID was killer. I'm fine. So, um, anyone else? Uh, any final shout outs from everyone before we raid into Phoenixy as uh, you know? Uh, going to give him i feel bad i was like he's starting off the, the con and he's never gonna have anyone raid into him now rob's starting off on sunday but he's getting raided into uh, on friday night so you know almost everyone's getting and i don't care about tim nice yeah well jay let me we, let me, we could talk let me about no. after we get raided over we could talk about trying to do something to get the uh, phoenix a little bit of a boost how about that after uh, we're over we'll leave it as a sure. surprise yeah yeah, yeah. oh it's, it's seven o'clock in the morning <laughs> On Friday, he, he's he, bow has got a plan. No, let him, it's let him a run. secret. Yeah, yeah. Just don't do anything illegal. Um, 
Why not? Say less. Say yeah. less. It's more fun Gabe. that way. No, 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 no. Deniability. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, I don't want to get in any trouble. I, 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 right now, I behaved for an entire year and a half on Twitch. I don't want to get in any trouble. So I got to deal with Tim, which is trouble enough half the time. Oh, Dave, yeah, me and Tim, and then it gets doubly yeah. difficult. Dave, you were going to say something? Yeah, I was like, just gonna. I wanted to before we phosphorus. raid and move on. I just wanted to quickly shout out to the crew over at Guild Superior. We've cool. been bust, busting our asses over there to produce a bunch of new, new shows and new games. And so uh, we, as Creep was saying, we've got this Blade Runner game every other Sunday. So uh, we'll have that this coming Sunday, um, and that's going on for 16 weeks or so. Mondays we have this ongoing thing called Monday Night Mayhem where we invite other folks in our community to come over and play games, run games on our channel and basically give an opportunity for young, uh, maybe inexperienced uh, in some cases, or maybe even experienced DMs who haven't streamed an opportunity to do that. And then uh, our new Greyhawk campaign uh, is is going on Tuesday nights. And so that's called Heroes of Greyhawk. And we're start, it's starting out in Homlet. So I'm very stoked to be running Homlet, which I've never done before. So um, it's a lot of prep, but it's really cool. And then Fridays we've got our shade song. So we've got four four programs going on and a lot of lot of good people playing. So big shout out to the crew over there making that happen. And to show that I pay attention to social media, how was your reunion? Your your, your in person oh. <laughs> GuildCon, yeah, <laughs> our first annual GuildCon. It was really fun. We had twelve people. Uh, a lot of them were already here in Duluth, but some people actually came from Arizona and uh, Pennsylvania. We had somebody from New York, and yeah, we played games and barbecued and hung out. It was great. Jumped in the lake. Um, yeah. yeah, it was a lot of fun. Lake so. Superior? You're damn right. Oh, how how long did you stay in the lake? Well, you're in and out quick, man. You know. I've that's, been, that's I've been in Lake Superior in like a 95 degree day, and I turned around three steps in. Yeah. So yeah, it's cold water, but it's it's cleansing. You know, it, it rejuvenates the spirit, so to it's speak. It's in a shock, is what it does. <laughs> it could kill you. <laughs> it's called the polar bear club. Don't be right. a wuss. You have the, the polar Don't be a wuss. Absolutely. Yep. Lastly, if you are having a problem, if you can't get in touch with your DM, if you're a DM and you can't get in touch with players, please. You got myself. You got Zarathon. You got Balfron. Where uh, you got Great Ape, you got Trevor. They, you know, get in touch with us. We'll do what we can to help out. If there's a GrabCon, uh, I'm sorry, if there's a um, um, Greg Reborn issue, we got Ron on. We got to get in touch with Jay and anyone else. You just as quickly as possible. Um, the communication channel is pretty quick. You know, we don't let stuff sit around. We 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 want to make sure everyone has a great experience this upcoming weekend to make it a wonderful three days. So please, if there's a problem, we'll work it out. Just there's going to be some games. They're going to try to be fitting people in and open spots. Um, and uh, thanks a lot, everyone. Unless it's a problem with my Greyhawk Reborn game, and then call Ron. <laughs> Are you running Ravages of the Mind too? Yeah, running Ravages. Last you know, last Len thing we'll talk about tonight. Talk about what that is. Ravages of the Mind is Len Lakafka's last adventure that he fully got out there not including some of the scant details that i know that jay and anna carried away in some private meetings with len but um yeah. it was done and then we decided to put it through an ad t treatment we did one play test with guys like curtis and folks we did another play test very recently like two two weeks ago and this is kind of like the last play test before we kind of okay, we get, get it finished Troy's been um, doing a lot of uh, help with with more artwork, so we're adding more artwork, more black and white artwork, more color artwork. Uh, we're redrafting. He's re redrafting all the maps in the blue, traditional, you know, old school blue, um, and just giving it a more vintage look and feel. It's huge. It's like 120 something pages. The adventure itself is only about 30, right? But you know, Lennon. Oh, you know, if you remember, you know, Croton or anything like that, mm -hmm. Len's got a billion pages of, and then there's this person in this house with this stuff and it's this type of house and there's these windows and doors and, you know, all the details are there, including their stat. He statted them all up. If you ever looked at the, you know, watched his Facebook profile, he'd be like, you know, uh, just, I, I was, I was not busy for five minutes. So I pulled out some dice in the DMV and I started you know, roll, stat, rolling up some characters and statting them out because 
You love doing that. And two characters in there in that uh, in in uh, in the town of Laakiel, which is in Raddick, by the way. This whole yeah. thing he said in Raddick. Um, so right, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, two of them have psionics. So Len liked psionics. He did. Len liked a lot of stuff that might other people have, didn't like. Might have been the reason there was psionics. Well, yeah, that's interesting. All right. I don't know about that, but. Len was Len was uh, Len was awesome. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. So, but Len was. You know, we missed Len a lot. Yeah, I'm doing the doing the the Len oh. game. Uh, the uh, Troy's uh, arm of Qualish uh, in five E. Len's game is in AD and D. And then Ron and Jay have me running uh, two Greyhawk Reborn games. So you're busy too. Wow. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Lastly. If you if you're part of the Facebook group Dun Advanced Dungeons and Dragons on face uh, you know on Facebook Alex Karazin passed a couple of days ago if you saw that sorry to hear it I never met him in person he was supposed to be at GaryCon last year and that didn't go last second so and I think he was going this year but it's unfortunate uh, so sorry to hear that my condolences to yeah. his family um, it was like three days ago that he uh, he said he died of a massive heart attack so sorry to hear that but um, Looking forward to seeing everyone. Remember, I'm on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday this upcoming week. So hopefully I don't get divorced. No, I'm just kidding. It's a joke. It's a joke. She, she knows. So Godspeed. Godspeed. We'll see you <laughs> she all. She signed off on it. She, yes. Let's get over 100 in this raid to Phoenixie. Um, um, he's on now. Uh, thank you. Uh, Dave, Darling, Anna, Roberts, Josh, Mike, Ron, Balfron, everyone else who was on tonight. Thank you so very much for a great prelude show. We'll see you. Uh, and like I said, if you can sign up for a game, still there's still some open spots. Yeah. And remember, yeah. remember the uh, the entire sky streaming schedule is now on the table. Just press the button uh, yeah, under events. Nope. Boom. No, it's under attend, and then streaming schedule or yeah. whatever it is under attend. It's right there. Yeah. Channel guide. Channel guide. <laughs> Click on it. It takes you right to the channel when it's as long as it's yeah. live. Yeah. Yeah, well, no, it'll take you there. It'll there. take you to the channel anyway, but you're not going to see anything unless it's live. You know what? Just go to it now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Jeez. Guys, seriously. Yeah. Click, thank you. And then click all those and follow them. Yeah. Just to, uh, that's too many steps, man. Too many steps. Yeah, please follow every single channel involved. Look at the nature. Really appreciate it. <laughs> dun, 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 88. That's good. 88. Woo. Five, four, three, two. One. Yeah, See you later in the week, game. Wednesday night. Bye. Bye. All right. Goodbye. Let's see what we got here. Goodbye. What a day, Good. sir. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you all for hopping on. Yeah, thanks for letting us pop in last minute. Oh, uh, it's all good. Thanks for telling me you wanted me on last minute. Uh, well